<laughs> I'd say just put it on but unfiltered because also if it's cut and and you leave those jokes in, if it if it's like cut in a certain way, it can look. It can make it look racist or homophobic or yeah. or pedophile or whatever. Pedophilic. But if they can see the full context, they're like, oh, that's where it started. I don't and know if I'm leaving those jokes. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with that? What's wrong it's with that? It's a knowledge school. <laughs> Thank it's you. a knowledge school. It's not, it's not Sunday school. Thank you for supporting our channel. Thank you for supporting Wizan. Please like, subscribe, comment, and hit the notification bell for any future videos. Today, Dave, we're here with Justin Sneddon, the Stormcap from YouTube, who is probably, I don't know, Justin, if you're proud of this, but you're probably the third biggest or second biggest taxi driver on YouTube. I gave up on it years ago. Did you? I, I, I still yeah, no. watch your stuff regularly. It's, it's, it's just the stuff that used to be there. I mean, used to attend the the uh, demos and things like that. They've dried up. So a lot of the time, you know, things I used to film, it's kind of, they don't happen anymore. So You're very active on Twitter, though, aren't you? Oh yeah, yeah, because that's that's instant. You can just you can just pop off, you know, <laughs> thoughts and have a laugh with people, and that's what I like about it. You know, that be, actually, cab, you know, it's like cab drivers are a pain in the neck. <laughs> they they are the funnest people on Twitter. Wow, um, I can't I can't even tolerate you. No, I can't You've, cope. It's taken me where we now. I got on there two thousand nine, and I've had parody accounts. I've had trolls going after me. I've had a lot. I've had to block a lot of people. It just got yeah. to the point a few years ago where I'm like, you know, they want you to block them so they can get the Medal of Honor. So I'm like, whatever, just take it. I don't <laughs> monkeys. You're blocked, you won, whatever, just forget it. But it's so helpful. And I, I, it's like I usually give an example to people. Several years ago, several, I can't remember if it was three or four, five, six, I was going to work one Friday night. So I started the car, the cab, sorry, and uh, went to drive out. I went, something's wrong here. What's going on? I went, no dash lights, nothing, nothing, not a single one, no dim, anything like that. So I tested a few things, tweeted it, all sorts of check the fuses. I said, there are no fuses for the dash lights. So I went indoors, called the RAC. They came out, plugged it in, said, yeah, new dash. I went, okay, that's the weekend gone, and I'm out 1,500 quid, whatever. And then about 10 o'clock at night, one tweet came in from a driver saying, oh, yeah, this happened to me. My garage I rented from took it in, just said, take the plug out from the right side of your wheel underneath the dash, put it in a few times, turn the wheel, the, steer, the, um, the ignition, and it was worked. It worked ever since. So it saved me two grand. And, and those... That's the most extreme example, but it, so a, many things has yeah. saved me money, hints, tips. Yeah, it's brilliant. So it saved you money, but you lose your sanity. It's it's if one you, of those things. You can either be on there or you can't. Mm. You know, some people I'd say, do not, uh, my wife, don't go on there. <laughs> you know, and I'm glad she doesn't because I, <laughs> sorry, I am worried about you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. So if you've got any sanity to lose in the first place, though. So you're no, I, I mean... <laughs> There, there's no logical debate. There's no. It's just schoolboy stuff. You could say something where you you're asking to be educated, but what you get as an answer is, "Oh, you big idiot!" Do 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 bully shit, and you think like, "Yeah, but that's the exact response I expect from them." <laughs> and you've got to expect that. Sometimes I, I ask a question, and I'm like, "I know what's going to happen. I'm going to get eight different answers from three different drivers." Mm. You know, and it that, and that's what happens. And sometimes I just ask it. I'm like, "You know what's going to happen?" But I just put it on there. And I'm like, yep, I thought as much. And you just get all this nonsense and you just laugh. Yeah. Just just because you just play with people. And they're, they're playing with you. And then it's... it's. It, I mean, I, when you first get on there, you... Yeah, I didn't... You had to learn to get a sense of humour. Because when it comes out on text, there's no tone, there's no body language, there's yeah. no eye contact. And you're like, who are you talking to? I'm like, mate, I'm joking. I'm like, oh, 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 oh of course I knew that. Yeah and, you, yeah. yeah, and then it takes years of sort of doing this and you you learn to add the little emoji. The like, Always like add the emoji, little laughing emoji or, um, you know, passive aggressive. It's just anything yeah. that make it, it's definitely a joke. Chill. You know, mm. but um, some people will just pop up every now and again and it's just, they as soon as it's, you can see the cross the line block. Yeah, you know, um, and just forget it and move on. I had my, my one little Twitter story because I I do hate Twitter and I I don't go on there any for anything other than to make a an announcement or something. But I was having an argument with or a debate with some people in the world, and I put up uh, the classic. I, I thought a man of your calories would understand that. Now what they don't understand is that the man of your calories is a joke on the man of your caliber, but instead they see it as literal. And now they're grammatically correcting you, you idiot. It's a man of your calibre. Mm. And you think, yeah, I know, but 
maybe my humour is a bit beyond you. <laughs> you yeah, are, yeah, but this, I mean, it, it's it's another thing is that happened last night. Um, somebody gave me an old five and ten pound in a in a fair. It happens all the time. I know banks take it. I know just hold that. Mm-hmm. I put it up as a saying, "Oh, look what some customers tried to slip in." Which they did. They slipped it in and I said, whatever, I go to the bank. But I put it up and I get like 20 people saying to me, the bank takes them, no problem. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Yeah, it's like, I didn't know that. It's like, you know, and you can't that. be educated. I'll <laughs> see you put it you on. I see, I see the ten I wasn't one of those that comment. Yeah, and, to, and to be fair to a lot of the drivers, a lot of them are like, I don't see, I've never seen their name before. So they're obviously haven't been following me long or whatever. And understandably, they don't understand that when you put out a lot of tweets, it's only for maybe 50 drivers yeah. who know, understand what's going on. And like, oh my God, you know, like I've said this before, it's obviously that's what it is. So mm. but, um, yeah, just, you just got to learn to flow with that, but it, it's so much more helpful. But yeah, I, I, I can't, I can't agree. I mean, I absolutely think Twitter is the worst and I can't wait to see it go under. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. that, that's my, <laughs> that would make me happy. Really? Yeah, yeah, let it go under. Well, just because, I mean, Elon Musk, uh, he started off, I, I quite liked him. And I thought, oh, the old idea, Tesla, it's all looking good. But slowly, slowly, he's gone down the ranks. Mm. <laughs> so he's probably gone up in yours because you're a conspiracy theorist. Mm. So did, and, conspiracy, gonna... and conspiracy theories are just things that haven't been proved true yet. <laughs> what's your, well, biggest, what's your but... biggest and best conspiracy? Well, I'm not any of this flat earth nonsense stuff. But then also I will say that nothing is 100% like yes or no. You know, we were taught that in physics. It's like you could, oh, you know, uh, so what about if you flipped a coin? It could either land on either side of it or just or continue edge. stand up. Said, so, yeah, but there's a very tiny, 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 tiny chance that it could explode. So that nothing is ever 100%. Mm. So did we land on the moon? Yeah. It's too many people to say they did. Flat earth, it's ridiculous. Sounds ridiculous. But certain things like the COVID uh, stuff. You do realise you just said flat earth and then but. <laughs> no, no, but and, then, oh, but and then moving on to other, you know, COVID and things like that, which people yeah. can, you know, through to conspiracy. Um, but yeah, all I did was I followed people that were um, silenced from the beginning, doctors, scientists. And my qualm, was, my problem has always been, why do these people never get put on TV? On these debates, you know what would stop conspiracies is having two sides to a debate but when it's shut them off and suspend their accounts dis- disappear them off and then everything you hear from the tv is just one yeah. line of thinking with no question i'm like no 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 that something's wrong there so that's why and you don't like musk elon musk but he stopped that isn't he he's, he's letting everyone speak no he's, he's th- anyone you just don't him. want the ones you don't like speaking. no 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 i think it's more fun i mean i'm so seeing this purely from an entertainment point of view um Musk goes on the idea of being the self-made man when his father owned an emerald mine. So you can't be literally self-made when your father already owned an emerald mine. Um, And I'm looking at it from the entertainment value of watching somebody fall, purely. And obviously I've got no skin in the game, so it doesn't matter to me whether he's a success or not. And I liked Tesla. I just think he's gone a little bit too um, public with his personality. You know, if, if you're going to be in his position, really and truly, you should just sit back, do your job, make the money, invest in the things you want to invest in. But he's, I, I think he's decided to come forward as a bit of a personality. But that's like your, while well, you do the podcast, it's promotion. It gets him out there. True. It puts him out and he can answer his critics in person. He can go into Joe Rogan and smoke a spliff and, yep. you know, and be one of the people and be, and, and you could, and anybody that argues with him at the end of the day, look, he's the, rich, the richest person in the world. You've not not saying you. No, no, but no. you've done nothing, mate. <laughs> what have you? You know, you're just some random on Twitter trying to take down the richest, most successful entrepreneur in history. Mm-hmm. It's like he probably knows a bit more than you about you know what to do and what not to do. Well, you see his latest outbreak about Twitter or X. He's basically blaming the advertisers for pulling the advertising for the collapse of Twitter. Hmm. When in actual fact, they're pulling their advertising because of his behaviour. So he's the knock-on effect for the whole well, decline. It's not because of his behaviour. It's because of they think what he says is anti-Semitic or anti-this or anti-that. Yet they're doing it on other... They're allowing other things. On He showed it on Facebook and Instagram. They're allowing things that they will pull in their advertising off of Twitter from. Mm-hmm. So it's it's hypocrisy. He is a little anti-Ukraine. They, they, well, uh, so so have a lot of us. Mm. What do you mean anti-Ukraine? What do you mean by that? 
he he basically has been helping the Russians by pulling his satellites when they benefited the Ukrainians. Um, any little perks he could have given the Ukrainians to have a military advantage, he's tweaked it so that they couldn't. And he said he said some things, I think, publicly. Um, but when I say anti-Ukraine, I don't mean anti-Ukraine. I mean the whole thing is just a money, just a money-making scheme for the defense contractors. And and, oh, and was in obviously. twenty yeah mm. in twenty seventeen, multiple newspapers I think it was twenty seventeen said that Ukraine was the most corrupt country in 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 Europe. Yeah, and all and and loads of far right stuff and and Nazi stuff, and suddenly oh no, poor Ukraine. Like, let's send them loads of money. It's suddenly all nothing they've done. They've done nothing wrong in the past. It's now we've got to help them out. And it's it's not that they don't. It's just it just seems like one big money laundering defense contractory scam. And then once they move on to the next thing, he's on the television begging for, oh, can you lend me some money? Mm-hmm. Now Israel and the Palestinian things taken off. It went from COVID to Ukraine to climate. The climate thing's still going on, and it's whatever thing is in the news. The other thing gets forgotten about for a while yeah. when people get bored of it or wise to it or get a few more sort of voices speaking yeah. from the other the other direction. And now it's like, uh, hello, um, you know, th- th- we're, we're going after all the news is Israel and Palestine now. Co- mm. Ukraine's almost forgotten. You never see anything no, about it. No, you hardly see anything about it. No. You anti-Ukraine, Endo? I'm not anti-anything, really. You can't be offered. No, I'm not really. I'm, what am I anti-anything? I'm not. Uh, I, just, I just like to be able to use critical thinking, to be able to question things to use common sense and you know the thing about the co- the, the, the main thing was that you know before covid governments mm-hmm. what do you think of governments uh they're all this uh, listen i'll tell you i'll say what let me tell you one thing that made me really think about governments was nancy pelosi and nancy pelosi the speaker in america or was for the speaker mm-hmm. and her husband's the best trader in the world apparently mm-hmm. it had nothing to do apparently with the fact that she was in on all the committees knowing all the tra- all the deals that was coming up so he invested in them there's nothing to do so mm-hmm. once you realize that you realize that why people become politicians mm-hmm. because there's a lot of money to be made yeah because a, a president or a, or a prime minister they're only on a few hundred grand yeah I looked last night. There's approximately three thousand billionaires in the world. Do you really think a person earning four hundred grand is pulling any strings or getting anything done? Mm. No. Well, but isn't that exactly the same, but on a different scale as you paying doorman to get for the fares on the hotels? Oh, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> they always. They, I mean, Bill Burr. You said you liked Bill Burr. Remember, the, he always pulls up these jokes about the eyed wide shut parties. Yeah, you know, I haven't seen all, that one. Go on. he, he spoke. He spoke about them a couple of times, but he talks about you know eyes wide shut. I never like, watched the movie. I would not, well, like I kind of gave up when it got to that bit in the film. It was a, it was like a high society film where they've all got prostitutes and watching pornography, and they're all, all doing right. these kind of like weird. Um, uh, what was the guy with the island? Um, what was the guy with the private island where? Um, Prince Andrew went to. Oh, yeah. Those yeah. kind of things where yeah, it's yeah. the ultra rich. Oh, We've quickly forgot about him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he hung well, himself the by that, the guy that that killed whole, himself. Yeah. Didn't get the whole list of people went missing, wasn't it? The, yeah. went, what was his name? Well, I've got hers. Uh, Gislaine Maxwell. Epstein. 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 Yeah. Yeah, Epstein yeah. 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 <laughs> but it's like those kind of things where it's the ultra rich and the parties they hold and, yeah. you know, the things they get, they must get up to. When you've got that kind of money, you're going to have entertainment that no, other people don't get access yeah. to. Do you think there's a whole other world of, that behind the scenes we never know about? But we do. We know that happens because Epstein provided it. Mm. He sh- he sh- well, he provided. The funny thing, uh, the, the controversy at the moment was, um, oh, what's his name? Alex Jones. Did you hear oh, yeah. about this? No. He was, he, do you know Alex Jones? He's yeah. the, the conspiracy theorist from America. And he predicted all these things. Like, um, uh, the, and he said, there's an island where they, they traffic underage children for sex with billionaires. And everyone, ah, oh, you're talking about it. And it turned out to be true. And it's like, but then he, 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 he got in massive trouble when he, he said something negative about a shooting. Like he said, I can't remember what it was, but it was something. Oh, I do. What was it? Oh, he said that Sandy Hook was a fake. It didn't right, happen. Okay, yeah. And uh, saying like got, 16 children were murdered yeah. by a man and he basically yeah, said it was all fake. And he's yeah. discredited. Oh, discredited wow. Him. He destroyed yeah. all of his... Yeah, yeah that's... But, but he got thrown off uh, Twitter and Elon ran a poll and said, should we let him back on? And I think it was like three to one, get him back on. Yeah, but three should, to one is becoming the fact that Elon Musk is leaning towards the far right agenda kind of thing. So the people that are on Twitter now could well be the population that like his... Uh, well, this is this is the thing about um, if if people keep being labelled far right, they're gonna, you know, with this everything at the moment is leaning very left, very 
um, far left. Lefty, yeah, far left. Well, far it, it does. You know, be, I, the, I, I have to. I consider myself left, right? right but but I am not into he, she, trans pronouns. Sorry, I think that you've done yeah, the trans the, the gendered fact, badly. Yeah, but the fact that you've said that automatically means you're right wing. Yeah, you're far right. Bigger. No, yeah, no, I can't, can't say that. Uh, but I also very it. much That's believe it. in socialism and healthcare, and um, people should have social security and mm. everything else. And you, you know, what is far left? Well, far left is to think that uh, well, it's easy. It's one word. Oh, go on. It's communism. What's far right? It's fascism. Fascism, yeah. If we don't have people like us in the middle pulling them either side in towards the middle, we would end up with either far left, far yeah. right, fascism or communism. And when it swings we don't too want far one way. Yes, it's doesn't. just going to swing back the right or the other way. It the, needs to be. The two sides of the same coin. People they just, just don't realise that they need each other. So what I mean, you, Dave, you're far right. I'm down the middle, mate. <laughs> why do we? Why do we all have to have labels? I don't get it. I uh, know that's you know the thing. I mean? like, I'm watching a lot of far right material on YouTube yeah. and thinking I agree with that. So you're you're saying, oh, the lefties are doing this, and I'm saying, no, I'm not doing this. This is. Yeah. This is. Uh, I agree with you. And yeah, I'm because on the if left. you had seven different left-leaning ideas but one tiny far right thing oh i don't think we should allow men identifying as women in women's lockers bigot nazi no yeah. you're far right gone just it's it's you can't you can't please these people they they decide what you are and what you aren't yeah and that's the far left sort of ideology and the, what i'm saying to people you really got to be careful because when it swings that far left it well you can already see it popping you're saying about elon sort of the right are getting a stronghold you know like mm -hmm. uh it's, it's getting in there and it the, the, all you need is the wrong or right kind of leader to yeah. say the right kind of thing and everyone sides with them, you know, and you get another... Yeah, yeah, yeah lost track. Lost my track of uh, yeah, yeah. train of thought. Um, is it train of thought train, or train of, of thought? Train of thought. It's whatever you want it to be. The English yeah. language is very I know. I think malleable. I saw a whole debate about the fact of whether it's a chain of thought or a train of thought. Mm. What's your bets on that, Dave? I've always thought it was a train. I don't know why. Mm. I don't know why. And it's just a guess, really, because what I thought, I've assumed it is. Well, they're both linked, aren't they? So a chain and a train are kind of, but a train's train. going somewhere, so the thoughts are progressing. I don't know. It's going to be train in it, I would think. I don't know. Do you know, we'll have if, to look it up. If I wasn't on a podcast, <laughs> I would be. Uh, like, yeah, isn't it's... it brilliant how phones have like ended so many arguments? You, you do the gym, Justin, by the looks of it. 12 years now. Yeah, stuck to it. Like, um, yeah, I'm stuck to You're it. You're doing. Um, just weights or yeah, cardio? Yeah, just I don't do any cardio at all. Yeah. Just I just don't get on with it. It's just so like some people run and they get a buzz out of it. And I've every time I try to go skipping, running after two sessions, I'm like I can't be bothered getting on that treadmill. No, no, it's rubbish. I, I think like anyone it. our age, you should run. Like you I, run. Yeah, though. I used to run a lot. I used yeah, to run ten k every other day. Yeah, but it's bad for you. No, I love it. It's, yeah. it's addictive. It's addictive. Yeah, it was. I used to get really disappointed if I didn't go for a run. I don't find it addictive at all. The runner's high, they call it, don't they? Yeah, I used to yeah. do 40k one week, 30 the next week, and, and carried on. It's only when I got greedy and I got good, uh, mm -hmm. this is years ago, that I um, did back-to-back -back days, so I'd run every day. What would you run in one session? Here, eh? In one run, what would you run? 10k. Okay. I, I, yeah, I'd, I'd run, you know, go out and just run 10k. Yeah, I wouldn't. That's a nothing. lot. No, it's not. It was, it's, it, when you're doing it regularly, it's easy. Mm, Dave, I walk 10k every day. I walk up the mountain and down again. I sometimes do 20k walking. Which is nice and relaxed, but you still end up with really sore legs. To hit the gym 45 minutes, do some deadlifts and squats, and that's all you'll ever need. Well, I can't because <laughs> my shoulders are ripped to pieces oh. and I can't lift anything. Yeah. I can't do a press up. What's what's wrong with their shoulders? This, I've got to have an operation where they're going to, the bone is touching and clamping on the okay. tendons that are running through it. So I can't raise my arm up higher right. than this. So, and if I did a press up, it's no good. Mm. So, and I like press ups. Okay. I did like press-ups. And you I can like do other things, bicep curls, pull-ups. I used to do them. I did. So look at that. Look at that. Mm. But I can't do anything at the moment. I've got to wait for the operation. And he says to me, I'll be as good as new after the operation. So we'll see. I've had two steroid injections. But as you get older, you get more and more knackered. If something breaks, it never bloody repairs. You need an operation rather than waiting for it. Well, yeah, there's the recovery. I've, I listen to thousands and thousands of hours of medical sports um, training podcast and there's a lot that can be done um, you just first of all you've got to give your, your body the tools to rebuild and we're all being pushed to eat vegan and l eat less meat and that's the most can you swear can you swear on this podcast? yes yeah, swear. Yeah, it's, it's the most bullshit thing I've ever heard in my life <laughs> <laughs> it's that big swear yeah yeah no no I'll, I'll ease in gently you know like you know put some uh, put some lube on and go slowly um <laughs> But uh, yeah, red. I mean, I've been in, I've eaten red meat almost every day for six years. My yeah. my my clarity, my health, everything has not, not has not been better. And um, you not know, just red meat. You're on the, you're on the uh, no no. I'm not. I've done Jordan the, Patterson. I've done the carnivore Peterson. a couple of times. 
But the problem is, what well, it's the easiest way for me to lose weight when I've done the. I might go back to it next year because at the moment I'm like over sixteen stone, just because I've just what's happening when I travel. I don't know what it messes up my my um my training. I, I almost like detrain as I travel. Mm. So when I get back, it sends my hunger into overdrive. But it's good. I'm putting a lot and lots of muscle. It's not like it's a you know I'm, I'm massively overweight. But I liked when I was like fifteen kilos lighter. I could jump around and climb stuff. Yeah. But the only way to get down there would be carnivore. The problem is with carnivore, I only have to touch a weight and I suddenly want carbs. So I have to like, I'm in this weird cycle of no weights at all mm-hmm. and go carnivore and the weight falls off. And um, yeah, I don't know what's causing that. But the traveling, I've noticed, I've, I've been traveling a lot since COVID ended. Yeah. I've just been going nuts. Well, you, you've yeah. hit on the thing there that a lot of people don't realize. And um, wh- the more you exert yourself, the more you want to eat. Mm. So uh, exercise is not a way to lose weight. The best way to lose weight is a change of diet and don't eat and don't exercise, don't exert too much, but stop mm. eating so much. Mm. And uh, well, we maybe the some right, light walking. Technically the right food. When they say move more, eat less, it should be move more, eat right. Mm. You know, eat, if if you eat whole foods, you know, de- um, food from animals, as they say, nose to tail and, you know, good quality. If you want to go for it, rice, potatoes, pasta, the fuel, Mm. workouts your body knows when to stop eating it all like i'm full but if you give it the ultra processed stuff that's been engineered in a lab to overcome your mechanisms to say i've had enough yeah you can just keep chomping those tortillas back and you know you've had four thousand calories you don't know when you've had 1500 a thousand calories of red meat you're like i don't want to eat for seven hours mm. you know it's, it's like that and it's Eggs, so digestive isn't it the meat yeah yeah and it's got all the nutrients you need mm. that that stuff you're eating it and the, the body's probably going on this is probably bro science so to say it's like you're eating it and it's like you're not giving it not actually nutrition it needs it's just carbs and msg and you know mm. e-numbers and all this stuff it's not giving you any nutrients yeah so when you eat the red meat it's like man that's got the vitamin b12 the folic acid protein the fats the did, 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 all the things that are the building blocks for the human body and if you eat right if you eat no to tell lots i eat five eggs a day i eat, I've, I've got you know with me i've had two lots of 20 percent fat mints as my two meals back to back what different I've words got a question. I, I want to know, know the answer why storm cab and i think i know the answer 2002 before the internet was really sort of you was first getting into it and ebay was out just flicking through one of these collectors magazines and they had a stormtrooper for sale it was like 1300 quid you bought a stormtrooper? Yeah, yeah. This was this was twenty years ago, and I and my wife was like thirteen hundred. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Come on, it's like a dream." I've always, I mean, it's like every kid would have loved a stormtrooper, and it was out in Swindon, and we had to go out there for something. Um, so I said, "Well, I go by the shop," and I gave him paid cash for it and got it for eleven hundred, and it was just all it is is cheap plastic, and this was before I was on any social media. And, um, yeah, I just got the idea of doing some, you know, when I was in my 20s then, and I was like, you know, I had enthusiasm. You know, I was doing YouTube back then. So I stopped 10 years ago, and now Tom, Tom the Taxi. Tom the Taxi, sorry, yeah. So he's taken over good because he's got the, he's young and, and energetic, and I'm like, whatever, you know. Yeah. Like, I've not got the energy for it anymore. And I think at the beginning of YouTube, I, sorry, once I started just putting videos up, and this was back then, I could see the sort of nasty comments starting, and... Once you start getting popular, I noticed that certain groups of the cab trade were like, well, you're getting quite popular. You need to be more of a voice to, to, to do this and you know, oh, yeah. have an opinion on that. And I'm like, I don't want an opinion on this. Like, you know, leave me alone. And it's kind of, and I saw the nasty. I thought, what's this going to be like in 10, 15 years? The nastiness of the comments, how it's going to get rid of And it has, you know, death threats, all these things that mm. people get. And I just like, just... Forget it. <laughs> Took a turn. Yeah, that's a, that's serious. This though, is cab right? driver. This is cab driver talk. Yeah, well, no, I no. I've had death threats, David, as well. Have you? Yeah, yeah. When I first started, a man, we used to send out free updates of things that changed, and uh, we had to send them by post. So during the month, I would collect this road's changed, this road's changed, this run has been updated, and did it and compile a, a little update pack. And this guy said that um, you promised that you would send me these. Bear in mind, it costs like it probably cost a quid to send every one. It was. You said you'd send me these until I finished the knowledge, and I said, "No, we can't do that. I'll send you them for a year. We send people with them for a year." He said, "I'll come to your house and I'll pour petrol through your letterbox when you're sleeping, just because you're not going to send me updates." And you and you think like oh, you're going to be a cab driver one day? No, I don't think he is. Yes, <laughs> no, he ain't a cab driver now, is he? But I don't know if he still is. Mm. But I just I've got a story that I couldn't tell on on air because it would make us look bad. It's not on air; it's radio. Go on. No, sorry, on radio. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> Make us look well, good. Tell, it, tell it and I'll cut it out. We'll cut it out. One night, probably about 15 years ago, I I got past the driver somehow, another cabbie. It was like he was mucking around, taking it too long. I can't remember what it was. It was New Oxford Street. And I went around him because he was mucking around. He, As soon as I was, we were stopped in traffic, he came to my window and said, I'll stab you. <laughs> and went back to his cab. And he had customers and I had customers. Yeah, so he may be a bit volatile, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same guy as the guy with the federal yeah. pop. Hey, you all you've got to do is keep it. You've got to keep calm during the, the appearances. Um, and then once you're out there, you can be like, right, I'd get... There's some that. of... I mean, yeah. That, I mean, I've got some lovely students who I know, that we know, who are very, very short-tempered, very having to control themselves, and all very moany, and the world is against them, and all they need is that little moment, mm. you know? They've certainly not got any Buddhist sort of um, vein in their bodies where they can keep calm and meditate. Oh, yeah, because yeah, this kind I of job, this job would attract people. There's no boss. You can practically go on on you, on, on Twitter. There's a few few places you can go and criticise your employer. You know, mm. the, every dri- every driver TFL this and TLPH, whatever it is that and the useless this and it, they don't get fired. Yeah. It's like, you know, even I'm like. Could they want to make a turn and say, well, it's easy to find out who Storm Cab is, you know. It's yeah, <laughs> we, we saw something funny the other day, Dave, where it was that there was a guy who tweeted um, the slags of the trade. Oh, yeah. And we, yeah. Was, we were second. Wizam was second. Yeah. But in the list was LCDC, LTDA, uh, the new cab people that have come along. He basically, uh, ten, 10 categories in this, it was everybody in the trade. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, got, I, got, I appeared on a cab driver's list of, of he listed about seven or eight, drivers and one was like you know prick this and self entitled and mine was childish and I, and I was kind of let down I thought is that you but <laughs> surely I've got you know and uh, but he listed a few like um ones I've blocked or don't follow whatever and and he even said in one of his further tweets was um I'm a bit pissed but this is accurate so he's obviously mm. pissed you know and like just I'm just going to go for it and say stuff but, no, but we, we all we all in the past I would have been offended by that yeah you know but then over the over years you know just, just play. The, the the thing is to show that you can take a joke, you know. And yeah. a lot of people online have said to me, "You can't take a joke, right?" But when I've turned around and did what they've done to me, the go off screaming and crying, mm. they expect that I've I've been expected over the years to just take it, yeah. you know. And when I've done it back, they've lost their temper. I say, you know. I wouldn't take any notice though, would you? Like, like that list you're talking about there, I didn't take. Any notice no, I don't of take that. any notice of that. But the funny thing I find is. This is why I don't go on Twitter as well. The person you're arguing with is a person you probably wouldn't give the time of day to mm. in the pub. It's the so it, you know the man in the pub who talks like an idiot. Suddenly he's now got Twitter and he's faceless, and he's a genius. <laughs> but in the pub, you can see who he is. So he's now telling you derogatory things as if he's superior, and you think like, and you, you do take it to heart a little bit more. But then you, you, what you have to, what you just said in that in that situation. Take take the life of the person who's talking to. You. Would they talk to? Why were they talking to you like that? Why are they calling you those names? Their home life can't be very happy. Mm-hmm. Their mental state can't be very happy. No sane person with lovely wife, lovely kids, bills paid. They're sort of going through life. They're not sick or anything. He's going on life. Going, All right, hon, I see you at six o'clock. At you, mm. you the wanking. Yeah, hon, I'll see you at six. Yeah. And then you know, hang on it. It's, it's not. It's not like that. <laughs> no, you're right. They're, they're not the sort of people you're going to want in your life, anyway. So that's why I don't take any notice of them. Anything, anything like. That. I don't really get involved. I do follow things on Twitter just to see what's going on, but I don't, I, I don't get involved in. I tell you what upsets you is when you found yourself uh, stepping into it and actually trying to debate it or argue it, and then you realise, oh shit, I I actually got sucked down this little rabbit hole a little bit. It's time I step off because there's no winning. No. There's no nothing. You These can't, people you are can't more prove somebody online. The problem with online is once you've lost an argument online, people are fearful that you can just turn around if you say, remember that last time you were wrong. So mm-hmm. they go into like, um, you know, character assassination, you know, oh, says the guy who dresses up as a stormtrooper. Anything to sort of <laughs> dis- dismiss your, because you do this or you eat like that or you, whatever, this is your little thing. Oh, you go and take some more bird pictures. You know, whatever. It's like, that's not an argument. Are you a Twitcher? Yeah. Oh, oh. yeah. You seen the pictures? No, I didn't see any Twitcher because Alan Price was a Twitcher. Where's your Rubik's Cube? Where's you going to lift your weights? Oh, gym? I can do a Rubik's Cube. Yeah. About four minutes I am. My friend, I went to my friend's house thinking I was showing off. Look, I did a, <laughs> and he was one of them 
30 second guys you want them 20 second guys yeah uh, no, no. Mm-hmm. well the fact is though you know being in it's actually very very easy tell you what the good who would be good at this is cab drivers it's literally like doing a run yeah run is an algorithm yeah so it's like you know left in st james is right into the, the, the that's what it is it's left right up lower yeah it's you've, your brain's already constructed to do it as a cab mm. driver very well yeah. maybe that's why I, I learned to do it i mean i just copied the algorithm once you know the algorithm you follow it yeah, you memorize it like mm. you're memorizing i mean when i was doing the knowledge one of the little tricks i did to learn s- differentiate streets and and roads was I would, in my mind, I would colour a street in silver, street silver, Mm -hmm. and roads red. And on the, um, we're doing a Rubik's Cube, any left turn is is blue and every right turn is red. So not only can I see the letter in my head, I can see the colour and it helps it double stand out. Mm -hmm. So I use tricks from from the knowledge to do the Rubik's. The trick you just mentioned for the streets and roads, the one I would teach people is uh, small and big. If you, have, you just take a sensation of small streets are small, roads are big. Not that it's a true fact. You just take that and you mm. can then, and whenever you associate the things coming up is small, you know it's street. Coming up is big, you know it's road. Mm. And it's the same idea as making it a colour. Yeah. Well, this is it. When everybody does, when when I did the knowledge, I I, I came and bought the books from you. Mm. But then I went off and did it on my, my own yes. way. I did the CBT, but thought I can't go out on the bike, go to work, go to school, go have a home life. So I did it in a car. And I fig- I just did things on my, I figured out my own ways of doing it, my own ways of memorizing things. And in my teens, I did buy a book uh, by Tony Bazan. You heard of him? No. He was like the memory champion yeah. in the 80s or whatever. And in my teens, I learned how to memorize a pack of cards. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'd have to practice again, but I got, I did it with two mistakes. So I sort of had memory techniques already before I yeah. became a cab driver and I just applied them. Yes. The thing about memory techniques that you teach people who are coming onto the knowledge is that they don't understand that learning memory techniques is a learning in itself. So you've already got that before you came to the knowledge. If you're now going to learn memory techniques as well as doing the knowledge, you're actually doing two subjects at once and Mm. it starts to actually get a little bit harder. And a lot of the technique is already there, the memory techniques. We're telling them the simple memory techniques that they need. I've seen pictures where you you have a long one. A long one? Lens, that is. A long lens. I have a long lens. Yes. Two. <laughs> two long lenses. And that's for the photography that you do, yeah? Yeah. It's just I picked it up because of COVID. We were locked in. I did photography before, obviously with the demos. Yeah. You know, I did photography and videography. And and then it was like, uh, yeah, just I, I sort of fell out with it for a while because I was doing street photography. And it's like, but you have to go somewhere to photograph people, you know, which are where they're happy to be photographed, like Brick Lane, Covent Garden, mm-hmm. you know, Camden. Uh-huh. And it's like, it's such a tra- hassle to go anywhere and do it. So I kind of sold all my equipment. And then I, for whatever reason, I, I bought, did I, what did I do? I can't remember. But I bought the stuff again and COVID hit. What am I going to photograph? Stuck in the garden. Ah, I'll put up some bird feeders, take some pictures of birds. Every morning for 12 hours a day, nothing else to do. I took my, my coffee down, my Rubik's Cube into the backyard, my camera. And you'd be sitting there and like, oh, what's flying over there? And, oh, what's, and then suddenly you th- see things you've never seen before. You're hooked. Mm. And it was like once everything opened up, I'd go explore in Kent, places I'd never I'd never seen in Kent. I'd be living there twenty years. Got me into the countryside, you know. Gave me because you know when you go out for a walk, sometimes yeah. you people, what's there to see? What's there to do? Now I have a reason to sort of yeah, go out and look there. for this thing, or you know, put a podcast in, you know, go for a walk at the sun, and you're on a treasure hunt. Yeah. Is there any way all the pictures you've taken? Is there any way for any the public to see them? They're, they're all online. They're, they're all, online. They're what's, what's I've got a Twitter account, Storm Cab Birds, which has got 11,000 followers. And I've got a Storm Cab Facebook page, which I upload everything to. So if you Google Storm Cab, it's just like either go to the bird stuff, the cab stuff. So you're more famous as a Twitcher than you are as a taxi driver. Yeah, the number. Uh, well, the thing is with the Twitch, yeah, I noticed that when I was posting pictures of birds, it was like when I did the Rubik's and the gym stuff, it was like cabbies going, oh, can Okay, I have to do a separate account. And as soon as I open that and I put some pictures up, numbers just were going, boom, shot up in the in, in the birding. There's just, I just, I remember putting up a few bird pictures. Like the, the cab posts would get three to 10 likes. If you've got something really good, cab and the cab, cab uh, Twitter account, mm-hmm. you get 50, 100 likes. But as soon as you put a bird picture up, semi decent, it could be 500. Mm. And it's like, oh, I like this. <laughs> There's money in birds. <laughs> <laughs> it depends what kind of birds, non feathered type. Well, yeah, there's always been money in the other type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. yeah, no, so I mean, it's, only since, it's only since COVID that you got yeah, into yeah, it. Yeah. So you was not in any way, shape or form into... I oh, was, you was. Because when I travelled, I went through all my albums. And oh, yeah. if there was a colourful bird in the tree, I'd take a picture of it. Oh. If there was an animal, it, whatever animal there was, and it was there yeah. to be photographed, I'd take a picture. So, you know, I'd been in Alabama and I'd got, you know, per, uh, rosette spoonbills, um, turkey vultures in... in um, India? In, in No, 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 in um, California. Oh. Um, Osprey in Bahamas, just yeah. And, and when I went to Jamaica, I was going through them from 2007. Oh, that's I didn't know what it was at the time. I thought they were the same bird, and it's like, oh, that's that bird, that bird, mm. and three different birds I saw on the beach. So, mm. yeah, I, I, it's not easy. And I mean, I'm just going to give you a little bit of some credit here because, um, I've taken pictures of birds, they're all shit. Every bird, every picture you see, a bit of, taking a picture that looks decent mm. of an animal. It's not easy to make it look. You have to really. Photography is a lot harder than people what, think. What have you got though? What, what type of camera and lens? I mean, oh, I've got decent cameras. Yeah. I mean, like you said about going for a walk. I, I am a scuba diver, and scuba diving became boring. You go under and you scuba dive and you get up again. And I thought, well, if we took pictures, it gets a little bit more interesting. But I can't see um, focus even on land. So once you put everything, all the water equipment underwater, I can't see if it's in focus or not. And I just trust the half. Well, you got eye. Something. Yeah, I'm, I've got, I'm, I just can't, I'm knackered. I've got one eye's oh. long side, one's short side. Um, and if you, you've you got two different kinds of cameras. There's ones where you can actually look through mm. and then there's the others with a screen. What have you got? I've got both. But right. the one with the, that I started looking through was my, I started to learn. But I don't, I'm not a very good photographer. Hmm. So I'm underwater learning photography when really I should be on land yeah. learning photography yeah. and then understand it better. But I'm taking underwater is super expensive. Yes, you know, I did it. Yeah, and you need yeah. It's like the the camera itself, the equipment, the case, and everything can cost five or six times. The yeah, you can get a five hundred pound camera that needs a thousand pound case and so then strobe lights and yeah, you know, they're like seven hundred pound. And the thing about the strobe lights is it's two enormous strobe lights and. <laughs> if you're like a meter away, there's nothing. There's yeah. no light at all. It ain't lighting up nothing. You mm. have to be the, the subject needs to be here, and the strobe lights need to be here. Yep. So um, it was very difficult, and I have some good pictures, but it just is very, very difficult. And again, it's very difficult to make it interesting. I did go to art college mm. in GCSE. I got an A star. GCSE art, A level. I got an A, and then I went to Central St Martins. I was, was going to say to Central Art Institute. Mm. So technically, I have an I. You know, mm. so and then I just learned how to use it. And I will say, carrying that big, the big camera and lens, it helps. I lift because <laughs> when I when I was recently in um, in uh, Costa Rica, I was on on this river cruise, and I was on the boat taking pictures. And and one of the w women who was with a group of, I think she was Italian, said, "Did you get any good pictures?" I said, "Yeah." I said, "I can't do it anymore. I can't hold the equipment. It's too heavy." So I'm I'm sort of blessed in that way. Like, and it's heavy. A lot of people walk around with it on a stick, you know, just to rest it. And I have it on my chest. I can just whip it up at any time. And I've got the strength to hold on for several minutes and focus on something that's like flying around. So it does, it, funny enough, it does, and you see a lot of photographers, a lot of twitchers. There's photographer twitchers. There are ones that just walk around with binoculars or yes. a little notebook. They don't do any photography. Yes. It's like, I saw this bird and that's... They're happy doing that. I wouldn't be happy doing that. Yeah. I would, I would learn the photography part, even though it's expensive. And not easy. Well, that's the funny thing about the expense thing. That's another subject. If I was on a bird photography podcast, I'd talk about it. It's like my equipment is like the cheapest sort of you can get away with. Like the lens I've got was 600 secondhand. Oh, that's Eight, cheap. 800 for yeah. lens, yeah. And I was worried when I bought it. I thought this can be rubbish. So I bought it and to test it. Because the good thing about photography equipment is you can sell it quite quickly mm -hmm. for the same price. So I bought it and I was really impressed. And what I've noticed is I know certain people who have got seven, ten, twenty, fifteen thousand pound lenses, five, six thousand pounds cameras. And they put their pictures. I'm on a, a, a birding group on 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 um Facebook and other photographers on Twitter mm. and I know where their equipment is and they can't take a picture for, you know, yeah. twenty grand's worth of stuff. And I've got an eleven hundred pound camera and a six hundred pound lens and I can wipe the floor with a lot of them. Yeah. Only because I know how to take the photo, get it in the correct light, the correct settings and in the correct post editing afterwards yeah and how to frame it and just frame it alone can you know make your camera look like a five thousand pound camera do you do any cheating and photoshopping and no no like? I, won't, I refuse no i mean um have i done that no i mean literally when it goes on to photoshop i i just i might just ramp up the little bit of the contrast just mm -hmm. to bring out some color but i'm one of those people that's like no it has to look exactly as i saw it 
Yeah. You know, and immediately when I see people who have, I can see they've added a sky or something. You can know. you tell when something's been photoshopped? Can you see it if someone shows M- you? Most of the it? majority of the time, yeah. I just know I mean, it's too Most good. people like me couldn't tell, could we? Oh, I, I was watching a YouTube podcast, a YouTube thing the other day about people who had won photographic competitions but were then chucked off. And the one that I remember was the, it was an upshot of tall buildings uh, or was it a stairwell? But it went out into the sky and in the centre was an aeroplane. Plane, yeah. yeah. And then when it turned down the contrast, there was a square around the aeroplane because it had been photoshopped yeah, in. I remember that. You know you what? When it. I was thinking, I thought, I've been to places where that happens. Why did they have to do that? Yeah. Why did they have to cheat? I've been to countries where a plane has flew. Central you know, to some buildings. Yeah. yeah. And the most recent one was like a picture that won an award. It was a setup, and I, I can't... The they, they openly admit it is the one where you start like, these Chinese women playing card card games. One's got a card on her head or something. Oh, no, I've seen it. And it's like, it was a massive setup. Not, I don't know if it was to win the competition, but they said afterwards, oh, no, 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 it was a setup. You've won, we've won this. And yeah, I, I, I'd have to look into it, if, whether it was they intended to win or it was like afterwards they learned that they'd won. But no, we, this was a setup picture for, a, yeah. for something. But mm. it's now with AI, it's, um, it's going to be... Um, yeah, I, I don't know how. Nowadays, you just say send us. Do you know what the raw? You know raw files. Yeah, yeah. Send us the raw file because that can't be mucked around with. Yeah, and we'll know. We can see how much you can manipulate very, very slightly. You know, if you just need to change contrast or something. But yeah, if it's like moving whole branches or backgrounds and stuff, then. But now with AI, I mean, I don't know how much raw files can be mucked around with. Yeah, well, the one I saw was uh, the this guy won for an elephant took a picture of an elephant one of the national geographic competitions mm. and he had swapped the ears he took the right ear and put it on the left and the left ear put it on the right and it gave it more balance and one of the ears was damaged um and they they didn't spot that he'd swapped the ears they thought he had um cleaned up the ears because yeah. the ear on the left had a big chunk out of it and the chunk was gone. So they thought he'd sort of photoshopped the chunk out to make the ear more <laughs> the ear more beautiful. What they didn't realise is the chunk was missing on the other ear now. Right. He'd actually swapped the ears over. And he lost he got it chucked out because of that, swapping the ears. Yeah. Maybe a massive bit harsh. No, that's a massive that's massive manipulation. Mm. Yeah, massive issue. But it was excellent still. <laughs> yeah. But it's like then you could, you know, you've got your ape your um artificial intelligence photos on they they're great photos to look at. Mm. But it's going to get the, the lines are going to get blurred in the future because it's going to be the point is to make a nice photograph. And what's the difference between somebody going and get it organically or just saying, AI, do me a, yeah. you know, a shark riding on a bicycle over a landmine, you know, f- on top of a 747 going through a volcano, you know, being yeah. attacked by, you know, Cylons in Battlestar Galactic or something. <laughs> well, I, you know, you want a piece of art that hangs on your wall that is kind of unique. It's not from IKEA. And um, I put in. I'm having them framed. Uh, the blurring is occurring. So it's not happening in photography. There's a blurring occurring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so one of our podcasts is called A Blurring is Occurring with Trevor Merrills, and he basically says in the podcast, the blurring is occurring. We thought it was funny. I've typed it into AI, and it gave me these two pictures that are amazing. Um, they're kind of a street scene. There are people in it. You can see there are buildings in it, but it's all blurred and streaked, and it looks amazing. Yeah. Um, so I've took them... I've 90 centimetres by 90 centimetres. I've had them printed and I've gone. To, I've had them framed and I'll pick them up when I go back. They'll go in the bedroom. Nobody else in the world has those. It's like, so what? You want it? Get it. Yeah. yeah. It's like in the in the photography world, there are, you know, people that still use film. They're like, no, no, it's got to be done in a, a you know, a dark room and done on film, yeah. the proper, the old school way. And LPs, only LPs, screw all that. You know, CDs and digital nonsense. It's got to be, vinyl. you know, a needle and vinyl and blah blah blah. Are you a vinyl man? I'm, no, can't be bothered. I just, <laughs> I just, I'm a, I'm a mood guy. I'm like, skip, 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 skip. Yeah, I want to listen to this. Mm. Mm. It's interesting isn't it, that he started the COVID because did Tom Huntley, Tom the taxi driver. Yeah, he, he started he COVID. Yeah, I think COVID is probably responsible for quite a lot of things. I think it's a conspiracy. The, the the governments wanted people to get off their asses and do things and be more creative, so they created a virus for people to actually. You know, raise themselves up. It's hell of a cost. Well, it did. It quite, it, it, <laughs> apparently, it created one new billionaire every day. Really? Because all the stuff, all the people that were making money off of the back of PPI, oh, yeah. uh, pharmaceuticals, and then you're locked indoors. You can do nothing but sit online and 
buy stuff because you're depressed and anxious. Yeah. So you're just going on games, you're going buying stuff, drugs, drink, alcohol, you know. So basically the other side of it though was people like yourself, and I think maybe myself as well, we were sitting there thinking, I've got to do something. First thing I did was bought a model kit. Do you remember what me and you was doing in the first lockdown of COVID? Oh, I was going <laughs> to... I remember. What's we were doing like 14, 15 hour days rewriting books and runs because yeah, all the streets yeah, are shut. Yeah, and we, yeah. was, uh, we was locked to each other. Yeah. <laughs> we were trying to work out other routes and everything. <laughs> all day long. So I didn't have time to shop online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were doing hours of work. So it yeah. must be a nightmare for you with all these LTNs. Like, suddenly uh, that uh, happens, you've got to do a whole, get rid of a whole book because one, one road change. Yeah, you know... Um, when something gets so bad, you kind of give up. That I kind of deflated it. It was you're trying to chuck buckets of water out the dinghy, and mm. it's coming in faster than you're chucking it out. And I thought, I've got to just let. I'm going to let the boat sink, and that's what I did. And then decided, with your inspiration, we will rebuild it from the ground up because it just got too much. Because I've written, what am I at? Two thousand five hundred runs. No, for four thousand. 4,000 yeah, runs. it's over 4,000 if you count everything. So if you imagine the run changes, right? I've got to check 4,000 runs. Now, you can do it digitally, but, but it then... So you type in Bloomsbury Square, it comes up about 150 times. You go, oh, shit, 150 <laughs> runs to change. And, and if any one small change, I was always, always open. it would be these obscure roads so that it didn't have many uh, appearances. But it always wasn't, and it was just so um, inundating. Well, I'm always of a mind. When you do something like that, you've just got to simply roll your sleeves up and start somewhere. Yeah. And you will get through it eventually. But it was massive. Wasn't it? it's, it's <laughs> but still we had time. Look at the time. It was like it's lockdown. No one was going anywhere. Yeah. They had nothing to do all day. Well, now it's got even worse though, David, because a guy he messaged me the other day and he said, um, oh, you've the book, the book you sold me is book two. It's out of date. I said, really? Because we now print from, directly from the app. The app's always up to date and Fiona will print. So it's kind of as up to date you can get now as up to the minute. And he said, yeah, yeah, there's this run through Streatham, goes through uh, from Liam Avenue in Streatham, and it doesn't work, so it's out of date. I said, well, that only changed like three weeks ago, <laughs> and your book might have been bought. If, when did you buy it? He said, oh, I bought it about three weeks ago. So you've literally bought your book. It could be the day before and the day after. Once and, it's And you've still, you've got to stay with physical books still. They, they like... The old age pension is like paper. Some it's people, really uh, strange. Some people still like it, don't they? they yeah. Like paper. Instead of like an electronic iPad, they, they should be having the runs there because you can just press update and yeah. it updates it. I still I still like a physical notebook. I do a lot of stuff in a, in a physical. Mm-hmm. I've got one in the cab and one on my settee. And even my like my Rubik stuff, i just quickly show you. Like mm-hmm. instead of like I could sit on here and um, and and, you know, somehow structure one but i find it quicker just to write it draw it with pen on my notebook take a photo photo yeah and put it in the phone it's, it's still the, the technology that's actually a good idea <laughs> <laughs> i i am similar to that that i i want to take a note but i won't open up notepad because i'll never find it again i'll, I'll yeah. put that note now i just don't work very well with it but i do have a notepad and pen beside me um but the advancement on that idea is take a picture of the notepad. yeah 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 <laughs> Well, that's what I do is I, in the photo albums, I have, um, uh, you know, Rubik stuff. Birds. You've got to have that. Yeah, you've yeah. got to have that. Well, you know what you're saying there? You've got to put stuff in there. Rather than have oh, all the photos in one, because when you go and try and find it, you took another 200. You can't find what you took. Oh, no, no. Got, I, have, yeah. I Anything that's of use, I put in favourites, and I don't have many favourites, maybe 10, 15 favourites that are all something to do with a reoccurring use. Mm. Otherwise, it's just a photo that I randomly go for. Most of most of mine are Twitter replies, all the little gifts and memes and clips from yeah. films. So when someone says something, you can quickly reply with like Arnie yeah. getting kitted up to go into battle or something. Or oh, you've got things ready to go. <laughs> yeah. Everybody has. Everybody. I haven't. I uh, no, no but I'm you're not, not on Twitter. No, it's true. <laughs> I'm not up with the technology. Some yeah, people send things where someone's slow clapping or something like that. Yeah, you yeah, think yeah, like, yeah. Oh, okay, very good. Favorite one. Everyone says it when um. When someone's leaving Twitter, they're making a big song and dance about it. I use the the Mickey Flanagan clip where he says, "Just go, you bender, go!" <laughs> and as soon as somebody, someone will message me and say, "Justin, where's that gif or meme or something?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you've got them all that category. Yeah, <laughs> actually, when someone says to me, "So I'm going there," you go, "What? Right, bye." Yeah, well, yeah. Really, they want you to say, "Then they come stay." No, no, you can stay. <laughs> but but again, we grew up. Well, me and you, and I, I'm sure you're you're not, you look younger than us. Yeah, sure he, we, we're first generation uh, Star Wars. He's not even there. I, 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 he I, wasn't no, there. I was, I was say, born we, a year after the first one came out. 
The New Hope, he was one, look. But we all grew up in Carry On movies. Look at the innuendo in yeah. Carry On movies, wouldn't we? Yeah. I mean, but I, don't, I don't think it would be done now, would it? I don't know. Would, would they find it funny? Do you, um, do you know who Matt Walsh is? Have you heard of The Daily Wire? Yes. He did that thing, What Is A Woman? Yes. You heard that? Yes. Well, he's the, da- the, um, the, the Daily Wire company has made a film called Lady Ballers. Yes. You heard about this? Yes. Yeah, see, yeah. So see the clip. Yes. Sir. This is it. It's coming. It's like it's 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 making fun of the trans movement. It's about of, of a group of uh, male athletes who can't win anything, and they cotton on so they can go into in women's sports. And obviously, it can't go on cinema. So you've got to be a Daily Wire member. So I'm gonna I'm gonna probably do it this week. Um, sign up for a month to watch it. But it's got like a 96 percent Rotten Tomatoes score. Yeah. That's and it's high. just it's really yeah because I'll, the argument I will I like you know I'll the argument is that. Obviously, the critics can't get to it. They can't watch it unless you get past the paywall. So yeah. all the people rating it will be Daily Wire fans. But it's got to be good. You've seen the you've seen the clips, and it's 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 starting. To, hopefully, that's going to be the first of many. I don't know whether it will make me laugh or not. Even though I completely agree with them, mm. I mean, I, I find it so so ridiculous. The the the, the weightlifter got upset because a man. Deliberately, a professional weightlifter deliberately then entered the competition to beat a trans athlete. Mm. He then said, "I identify as a woman." So I don't know if you know the one about the weightlifter. The, the one that did it on purpose, like to he did it them. on purpose to yeah. then beat the trans athlete. That yeah. always, this trans athlete weightlifting beat the woman's weightlift deadlift maybe by a hundred pound or kilos. I'm not sure what they probably were working. Kilos, probably kilos. So a hundred kilos difference is like absurd, isn't it? Between categories. So the women are now never going to ever do it again. So this professional deadlift guy says, I identify as a woman. And he comes in and beats the trans guy by another 100 kilos. And now he, he's basically me and you lifting weights because we would beat them. And now we're going against the professional weightlifter we couldn't beat. The pro- I think it, the thing is with everything, it's, <clears throat> it's been, it's been politicised. I think most people were of the, do what you want to do. As long as it doesn't affect my life, I don't give a monkey's. But it's been politicized to divide us perfectly. You know, Ukraine and, and Russia, Israel, COVID, are you vaxxed, are you unvaxxed? It's, it's the perfect divide and conquer. And the meme I use a lot, which online is my favorite meme, is a picture of a king and his aide on the wall of the castle and all the, the mob is there with their pitchforks and, flame and torches and they want to, like, you know, take him down. And the aide says to the king, you don't need to fight them. You just need to convince the pitchfork lot that the torch lot are trying to take their pitchforks and vice versa, and they'll just fight each other and leave mm-hmm. them alone. And it, it's like the uh, thousands of years that strategy has worked, and we're still falling for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's happening it's now. One, oh, it's like you know, probably on the page one of War and whatever the you know the the manual of War. What's the what's the War um, and Peace? Not War and Peace. The <laughs> Sun Tzu. Uh, the art of War. The art of War. Art of War. Like, Sun Tzu. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you're you're not vexed. We're vexed, Dave. We work against. But he's not even vexed. No. Well, you see, it don't bother me if someone's vexed. No, I, don't I, I don't care. Well, anyone else, you'll do what you want to do, don't you? It really don't matter, does it? I got, I got well, a that friend. was what we asked. It's just yeah. like, it, like it was always freedom of choice of to you know your body, your your. This was the thing about uh, in America. It's like you know your body, your choice. You know, for like um, abortions in America was the big subject. And as, as soon as this COVID is no, it's not your body, your choice. We're telling you to take the thing, or you're fired. Mm. No, that worked in reverse, didn't it? You got that the wrong way round, Justin. So. The people who were pro-abortion were saying, my body, my choice. Mm. And the right wing tended to be, no, we you can't have abortions because yeah, we're yeah, telling the, you. The right wing, yeah, but the yeah. right wing aren't in charge. Yeah. But then the right wing were also, uh, we don't want to have a vaccine because suddenly they'd gotten on, I don't know why yeah, it was. The right, funny enough, yeah, the right wing were. Anti-vax. Yeah, anti-vax. And I don't know why it was a political divide because really and truly it should have been a mental divide that mm. had no political boundary. It should have been people thinking, mm, I'm not going to do that and I am going to do that. Mm. But yeah, they, they then come out with, yeah, but it's my body, your choice. And then they were hit back with the argument, okay then, so abortion, my body, my choice. Mm. Oh, oh no, that don't quite work for us. Yeah, oh, I okay. think I was, I mean, that's probably more the case <clears throat> in, in Canada. They did that. But in America, it's still very... Like because all the states can have their different right wing, left wing, mm. you know, like um, Texas is very pro guns and and what is it blue? Is it called blue state? Yeah. And then 
California is like, yeah, trans this and do whatever you want to be and poo in the street and tents, build tents and, you know, like all that kind of stuff and rob stores for up to $900 and you won't get arrested and league is, weed, weed is, is legal, just, you know, very, very liberal. Yeah. So all the states have their different policies. But, um, yeah, at the moment, the, it's been very much left-wing run and the right are trying to slowly with... You know, Trump, are you, uh, what are you with Trump? Oh, I think Trump's a complete and utter idiot. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, come on, he's an idiot. But he was fun, wasn't he? <laughs> but that was the thing. So again, I'm going to my Elon Musk thing. I'm not very serious about this thing. I just think that Trump, it's more fun to watch Trump go to prison from an entertainment point of view. Um, thinking that Trump makes any sense or anything, that's ridiculous. But politicians in general yeah. are... Well, people are saying that they, the people who predict what's going to happen... Is going to be he's going to be prison a president from inside prison. He's going to go to pres- prison. It's possible voted in. No, it's and not he's possible. Going to be ra- no, he said it is. He said that's what they you said. You can't. You Why? can't actually be. Um, Why can't you? Because there's a thing, isn't it, in America? No. If you've been to prison, you can't vote. He ain't, he ain't about voting, is it? He's about no, being about made. Him being he he could be president. He could become president. This though, is right? the theory they have that he'll be president and then go to prison, no, or he'll be in jail and as president. A president. Um, I don't think you can be on the ballot if you're in jail. Don't know. That's Let's what, that's see. What, that's what, the, that's in, what I've heard from like political pundits on. But politics. if he is in prison, right? Well, then my my view would change because then I'd think myself be very funny if he's president in prison. That would be more entertaining. So you, I, I th- think, I think you can point be on the ballot, and I'll tell you why. I know it's a different country in this year, but I don't know if you remember Bobby Sands. Yes, he, when he Younger died, straight. he became an MP, didn't he? They voted <laughs> him in after death. Yes, but, but, but if, that's what I was saying. That's why I don't. I think maybe he could be president then in jail. Mm, what well, you, 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 you're comparing in jail to we're, a dead body? No, he, <laughs> no he, he was voted. <laughs> Bobby Sands was elected before he died. Oh, before he died. Yeah, and yeah. he was in jail. Start when he was on a hunger strike. Mm. So possibly he could be. He Bobby. doesn't know Bobby Sands, do you? I've heard the name. Okay, because again, we, you, you, you said about the music, right? Now mm. there's a um, there's nearly a twenty years difference between me and Dave and you, nearly, and. Th- that's it. There's a whole thing that we know that you don't know because you was talking about young people. There's a whole thing, like you said, they don't know Dire Straits, mm. oh, yeah. which is weird because I know Elvis, I know Jerry Lee Lewis, yes. I know Chuck Berry, I know you know View from a, a View from what's the Cary Grant films, and I didn't watch yeah. a lot of them, but The Birds and Hitchcock. I know a lot of popular culture that yeah. goes right the way back to the forties. I know you know, I know. Um, but we were different, maybe just The Wizard of Oz, and yeah, yeah. I think I don't know. I said to my wife the other day, I don't know if I'm just getting old because I know that when we were young, the old people said our music was shit. But the music is shit now. It is. It is. Because if you go to any disco wedding or whatever and it's from someone who's 20, yep. 30 years old, the music, there's a couple of songs from now, but it's all 70s music. It's, it's all, all classic. Earth, Wind and Fire, yeah. and Michael Jackson. It's Great still, songs. It's, I think it peaked like 60s to late 80s. Yeah. And then sort of dribbled on either side. Mm. You know, you got a bit of, you know, there's some good stuff. There's some, you know. That's so well, my kids have always say the music stops at 1990. Because they were born in the 90s. <laughs> you know what, though? That ain't a bad shout for the date. It, like, there was some... No, I can't. Post 1990, it stopped about 1990. Exactly. I mean, I didn't, all the Brit pop, uh, pop stuff, I was like, forget it. I was, I was, you know, Dire Straits and I was yeah. Michael Jackson, Earth, Wind and Fire, um, all the 80s movies. And after the 90s, like, I mean, the, arguably 90s movies are the best decade of movies ever. Mm-hmm. You know, Silence of the Lambs and Pulp Fiction and, yeah. you know, oh, it's Usual Suspects. It. And yeah, when you think how long that's 1990s and the movies... 93, 30 years. Jesus. You know, Jaws, is, Jaws will be coming up to 50 years old in a couple of years, I think. Like 70, yeah. 75. Yeah, I think I, I read 75, 76 years, something like that it was, wasn't it? It's still a good movie, though. Century. Century. Jaws? Yeah, it's still a good I, movie. I can't watch it again, though. Could you? No, there's a couple yeah, of movies. The no. <laughs> I might watch it again now, but there's one, I can't, there's one movie I cannot watch again, which was Saving Private Ryan. Can't watch that again. Reminds me of when I was in the army. <laughs> <laughs> during the war during the war no that so was so I'm trying to I don't know if I'm supposed to laugh at that I'm trying to read oh, the, our jokes are shit All right. our jokes are <laughs> shit really speak yourself have you noticed as you age that you can't that I can't watch films that are a tough watch that I was watching in my 20s you know somebody was putting up Requiem for a Dream the other day and I think I watched that in my yeah you know, probably my late 20s or early 30s 
and it's about drugs. It's really tough watch. Mm. And I've watched things like the um, the pianist, which is uh, the Jewish piano yeah. player. Yeah. And when I watched it, I mean, I was like, it was brilliant. But I tried watching it. I got on twenty minutes in. I can't. It was like I could feel the the the, the pain. And I, and I don't know if it's because of age or we're just constantly bombarded through things like TV mm. and social media. We're at saturation of how much we can cope with. Now, if you give me a film that's bad or, or tough watch, I haven't got any more room for that. Yeah. It's like I can't. Da, da, da. And um, another thing I've noticed that when you have watched something, um, I've noticed it a couple of times, when you've watched something hard and then you watch a comedy stand up, you laugh three times as hard. Mm. It's like you really notice it. Are you, like are you a Mickey Flanagan fan then? I'm um, um, Chappelle, Flanagan, Bill Burr, Chris Rock, Chris Tucker, Segura, all of the non-PC, yeah, the, the better, yeah. you cannot offend me. Mm. You can Bill, say anything. Bill, Burr. I, uh, yeah. Bill yeah. Burr's good. Yeah. Yeah. In Boundaries, I, I like a guy called um, Anthony Jeselnik. You I don't know him, him never. Yeah, no. he was, he's, he's got a special on YouTube. He really, um, he, he actually said that he tells jokes that, he does get pulled on. He said, but that's th my responsibility. If I say this stuff, people have the right to call me on it and I've got to be able to defend it. Yeah. But he went, he was a weird one. He, he, was a, he, he started off as a joke writer for a show. Then he had his own show. And uh, he said on one of his stand-ups that, um, well, I've watched it now. It's, it's a deleted scene. He had his show cancelled because of it. He said he loved sharks, right? And he said, one day we're going to have something called a shark party when... We're going to listen to the news, and the next person that gets eaten by a shark—it's not a joke. It's somebody in New Zealand did get eaten by a shark, and he had all these dancers in in shark costumes. It's on YouTube, and he had death threats from New Zealand coming. And I said, oh. "Yeah, we got one for the team. We we kill a hundred million sharks a year. We and now they've got one of ours as you know revenge. Brilliant! Somebody died, and he got his show cancelled because of that. Wow! But he he goes hard. He's very he does a lot of pedophile. Lot of, like, um, <laughs> I don't, it's not. I'm not going to be able to. I'm not going to tell it like him. But he said he was telling the audience one of his opening jokes, and it's like, did you know that there's like within five miles of where you live, there are like twelve. I found out recently there are twelve sex offenders within a five mile radius of where I lived. It's, it really winds me up. And he says, because why have we always got to meet at my place? Yeah, and that was. <laughs> he got a dozen of I knew he'd be part of twelve. Yeah, and it's like another ones like Eric Clapton was. Um, uh, Oh, what's the, I'm going to screw it up. But he says, I, "Was it my my? I had a son who died, and he died for this in the same way that Eric Clapton's son died. For, for, for build it. no, no, for inspiration. <laughs> so he's just for the joke. So he can he, make a song. Yeah, yeah. So it just goes hard. It's like you can see the audience go. <gasps> they laugh, but they're like, you know, he's yeah. really pushing the boundaries. Isn't Jimmy Carr about the hardest? Thing yeah, he's kind of like um, he's he's very punny like that. He tells short like you think he's going one way, and then he switches it and yeah, he goes yeah. another way. Yeah. But yeah, Jimmy. Yeah, Jimmy. I think. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm a fan. I like Jimmy Carr. I'm not much of a fan of his. It's. It's just one of those things. He's. I don't. Not. It's just things that sort of mesh. Some comedians work with me. Like um, there's one called Andrew Schultz. He's been on Rogan. Super clever. But his joke taking isn't quite. It's not for me. It. It. it he's a bit too kind of broy, and he pushes hard into sort of things that you know they are jokes. But they they push too far for me. Not that it offends me, but I just yeah. I just don't want to watch it. You yeah. know, I just like the way Mickey Flanagan does jokes, or Chappelle, or Rock, or Jess Ornick and stuff yeah. like that. And They're all be, great. Yeah, there'll be comedians that Rogan talks about. I go on and watch them. I'm like this isn't crap. It's mm -hmm. not for me. Not that they're not crap. They just I just don't. They're not yeah. But well, we're going, Dave, aren't we on Sunday? We are. Oh yeah. Definitely. What's this? We're going to the backyard comedy club. Oh, sorry to see obviously uh, because the crazy ginger cabby. <laughs> he's uh, doing a stand. He's not doing a stand up, so he's comparing. So uh, we're going to go along and uh, have what a time night. Is it? I don't know. Is it seven thirty? I rely on you, Dave, for the um, statistics. I think it's seven thirty. Are we yeah. eating first? Uh yeah. Korean. God, it's a Korean last time. Yeah, I know. The kids want me to have Korean. Why? Well, so because it's not you. It's no, not because you. I, to be honest with you, I think Korean is literally. There's no difference between Korean and bloody sushi, Japanese noodles, Wagamama. It's all. But I thought Korean was uh, all barbecue. Is it? Oh, yeah. when we're going in, Davey. Oh, yeah, I like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like, Is it like cook your own, cook your own meat. I don't know. Yeah. I've never been Korean before. Yeah, yeah, it's like literally, oh, it's like it literally barbecued meats, beef and pork. Oh, and that's it. We're yeah. in. <laughs> <laughs> is there one on Cambridge did, Road? Did, uh, we'll have to look it up. It's got to be one in that area. We, we'll check it out. There's, I think there's one near. got to be a Korean somewhere. I mean, this is London. Yeah. Yeah, the further you go in, 
But what is the funny thing about the Chinese restaurants here? There still is a Chinese community here in Limehouse. And all the Chinese restaurants here, you cannot buy like a chicken curry and rice because the Chinese don't eat a chicken curry and rice. They eat like a smashed crab in it's good. poured it's in good curry. Stuff, yeah. yeah, but it's still in the shell. Okay. Well, that's, that's, yeah, that's, real, that's the real deal. Oh, it's yeah. really hard work. Because I'm married to half Chinese. Yeah. And when she came into my life, I got to, you know, eat real stuff. And I prefer it. I mean, stuff that I never thought I'd eat, like, you know, like turnip cake and yeah. Snake. all sorts of weird. No, nothing, nothing <laughs> extreme like that. I haven't tried. I'd try it if it was there. Yeah. But, you know, real Chinese food as opposed to special fried rice and chicken. Yes, yes. So, you know, I like my dim sum and my, you know, wonton and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, and we go. I love being in Hong Kong three times. I keep talking to her about we're going to go back there soon because this will be the first time I've gone back since as a bird photographer. So I was on YouTube oh. looking at what you get to see there. So it'd be... It'd be you high know, up in Hong Kong. and Hong Kong. It'd be high up in Hong Kong, wouldn't you? Get some pictures up there. There's all tall buildings out there. I've been to Hong Kong, yeah. I've been to Kowloon as well, Kowloon. Yeah, about food, Singapore? Your daughter's in Singapore. She, she's in Singapore. Yeah, we're supposed to be going to Singapore. Mm. I haven't got... I, I was there like, briefly. You're going to be doing yeah. some um, bubblegum smuggling. <laughs> Bubblegum smuggling. Yeah, Do you know about that? No, what's oh, that? Oh, you're going jail. It's, it's illegal to take bubblegum. So. Oh, I oh, see that because the I pavements. I thought it was just yeah. throwing it on the ground. It's just not. Oh, I thought it was a legal commodity as well. I don't know. Okay. We have to I check know. that out. Yeah, We're Google. See, if we had the little secretary doing Google now, well, she I could can do it. But it's like it looks a bit crap. That's very really sexist. Mm. You assumed it'd be a female. Yeah. Yeah, well, well, Logan's got Jamie, hasn't he? You need somebody who's not on camera. <laughs> yeah, doing all the we want, I wanted Fiona to be doing it. <laughs> <laughs> we no, haven't asked no, you a single just, cabbie question. No, I know, but that's true. About this. I have read that. Yeah, they, they, the bubble gum in, in Singapore on it because of the pavements. It's not I, a bad idea. You know, it's what, not a bad what, idea. What on earth do we need chewing gum for? No, no, it's terrible. I, I'm sure it's actually illegal. The chewing gum is illegal for the pavements, but I think it's illegal. But you're saying it's maybe just a crime to spit it out. Yeah, you can. I think the gel gel thing are fine. Hey Siri. Is chewing gum illegal in Singapore? Cannabis in Singapore is, is currently illegal. Chewing gum sells banned in Singapore. It is not illegal to chew gum, but it's against the law to import it and sell it. Import it, oh, see? Import it, so you could, that would be important it. taking it in. Yeah, if you take it in bulk. How on earth would you get it if no one can import it? So that's the they deal. So ca it's a catch, isn't it? Yeah. You can't import it and you can't sell it, but you can chew it. <laughs> so yeah. how did you Always get it? You take it off the pavement? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe, it's very clever. Maybe to sell it as an individual. Maybe companies like airports and, you know. Well, if you're going to be, yeah, are, are they going to stop you when you're coming in and say, oh, you've got chewing gum in your bag, like they do Take it? Take it off you, surely, if they don't. Mm. I mean, like any food. Like, all different countries have got different regulations on what food you can bring in, haven't they? Shall we do some cabbie questions? Yeah. Yeah. How long have you been a cab driver, Justin? 20 years next year. Oh, right. 2004. Wow. Because you came to me in Watts Grove, which was the first, well, the second, the second Wizan school you was at. Okay. Um, but yeah, like you said, you didn't come as a student to attend. You came as a student to pick up bits. Yeah, pick and, up the books. And drive me mad with questions because I knew you had your own ideas. <laughs> and uh, and then your your wife, Hannah, she had a go um, not that Anna, long ago. Anna. Anna. I better correct you early on before. <laughs> so was it, why didn't you what? correct my name? Was it Hannah or Anna? Anna. Anna. Did I say Hannah then? Yeah. At like Hannah Montana, but really it's like Anna. Yeah, Anna Wait. Banana. How long did it take you to do the knowledge? T technically, from the moment I picked up the books that got my badge was 23 months. That's yeah. good, isn't mid, it? Mid-November mid to mid-October. And I technically, I'll argue I did it quicker because I never actually started doing the books till about three months in, till about January, February of 2003. So what was you doing then? Well, I, I had them and I was like, oh, I'll, I'll get around to it and then I... And it was weird. I went over. My, my aunt was in Vegas. She died um, in 2002 from diabetes complications. I, went, I remember taking the books to Vegas with me. And I said, when I'm over there seeing the family, I'll study them. They never came out once. And for, I eventually started to look at them. And um, then I got on and worked hard. Mm. But I was, a, I was a minicab driver in Blackheath. And um, I moved from Blackheath to a central London firm. So I could. my idea was I could double up studying and working because the idea was that you you know visually going with a book, so I was at work nine hours a day and at home doing three or four hours studying, and you know if I got one or two customers in the back, I'd have all my books on the seat, and I could be driving and sort of like every so often look across and go, okay, there's that building, and it knocked off tons of time. Mm. You couldn't have got any of the passengers to test you on the run. <laughs> well, this is it. When the, the, this is what I missed about being on the knowledge was once I got to twenty eights and twenty ones, how sharp I was. I mean that's gone now, but it's like. People would say, oh, I want to go to Putney. 
where in Putney, Upper Richmond, which I don't know which street, which. How do you know all this? I'm yeah. like, man, yeah. I was on fire. I yeah. missed what that. number? What <laughs> yeah. number? Forty seven. The, the red door, the one with the brick missing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but you're never once you once you finish them, you're never as good as again. No, no, it's never. fading no, all the time. I say it? to customers, I say to them, when you do the knowledge, you literally you can throw fifty percent of it away. Yeah. Statues. I've never been asked for a statue. Turn around. No, I'm doing a U-turn. Yeah, it's stu- I, so I don't think the turn around teach you to turn around, is it? All the time it's teaching streets, isn't it? Sure. Yeah, it's just well. a teacher it's a teaching streets, streets, but yeah. then when they ask you, if you're learning it for um, a route. No, it's nothing to do some, with a route. some. Some of the turnarounds down down in Streatham or wherever. Yeah. What's the point of that? Yeah, you're picking up some streets that you might get. Yeah, but what's, asked. The, yeah, but what's the point? You no, look them up. You? you won't even remember them. You might remember the name. Forget loads of stuff. They, you know, you're doing the knowledge. You know, they don't ask statues anymore. Okay, so because of the old BLM thing. No, it would be LM. You know, Black Lives Matter, all the, you know, oh, you used to be a slave owner. Oh, right? okay. Well, it's a good, no, no, okay. it's not because of that. It's because of knowledge boys, to be honest with you. So there was always a few bad knowledge students that kind of couldn't cut it, as it were. Um, and they'd go up and they'd be asked a statue and then they'd get the ump that I'm not knowing anything. But the thing was, as we know, they'd been asking that statue for a couple of months. So you'd seen it. You knew which statue they were asking. They weren't asking a willy nilly statue. They're asking a specific thing. So you had a chance if you was on 28s and 21s and you'd been pushing the boundaries to see it and then go out and visit it. But these guys were not at the boundaries. They were way, way, way down in terms of the stuff they knew. So therefore they would always moan. They're asking me stuff that's not what cab drivers get asked. So it ended up cutting out a load of interesting blue plaques. Um, Mm. I mean, you know where Benny Hill lived? Um, on um, uh, Queensgate. Yeah, so do you know that from the knowledge? Only from the knowledge. Yeah, yeah. so the point is me and you know a load of these mm. that are all knowledge related. We're going now into the dire straits idea that the, uh, this generation would mm. not have a clue. I know statues that are unbelievable. And they're no statues, no blue plaques, no interesting historical things anymore. Nothing. So there's a whole band of stuff that they decided you can't ask because you'll never get someone who gets in the cab and asks you to go there. But the point of those points at that time was that when we get to 20s, 21s, we are kind of hopefully at the forefront. We've done all the groundwork and now we're really pushing back boundaries. So for us, we could stop there, but we can't stop there because the examiner keeps asking these new little things that we have to keep pushing on for. And that's what they were. They were the new little things to keep pushing you to go out and find something else. Well, I wonder what was the knowledge like before I did it? Was it those things were what people who came, you know, tourists and that, oh, where was, who was, where was this born? What kind, what buildings that things customers asked, whereas now they don't ask that stuff. Mm. Well, I don't know. Just curious. Was it, you know, if there's a cab driver. Was you know what it is? Well, the more advanced you get as a cab driver, the more you long in the tooth as a cab driver you get. Suddenly I think it's you that's the problem, not the passengers. We don't realise it, but when you first pass out, you're probably asking the passenger what way you'd like to go. No advanced Cab driver asks what way you want to go. I do. Still. Yeah, I, I, if, if there's like a multiple route, yeah. I'm like, just just in case if there's like a two or three ways, I will say, do you want to go Edgware Road or do you want to go, you know, Ken Church Street, mm. whichever's quickest. And sometimes, I, I, I like the other night, somebody wanted to go to Porchester Place, picked them up at Gloucester Road, and I went, the park's screwed, High Park Corner's screwed. I said, mate, it's going to be ages of traffic. I can go around it if you want. So yeah, yeah, it's had long. I said, 15 minutes, we flew there. And yeah, he was happy to pay that little bit. That's, that's giving them advice. Options, though. yeah. That's, that's yeah. giving them well, that's, that's that was the slightly most different to saying what route yeah, do you yeah, want to go and letting them decide yeah, the route. Isn't that's it? just yeah. one, but I have, I do often say that because I don't want to start go hearing. <sighs> yeah. Well, go back to the yeah. go back to be your first year in the cab with that same problem with the Porchester Place and through the park. Now you know that the parks through the park's bad. Did you say Park Lane was bad as well at the same yeah, time? Yeah. So you know those two things. Because of Google Maps. Yeah, now I'm also a new driver. Oh, right. Yeah. We didn't have- <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, we didn't have sat-nav. So it was just like you had to take your chance. Yeah. As soon as that traffic feature came out, I had my phone open all the time. As soon yeah. as someone says get in, I quickly go right. Yeah, I'll uh, say that route's the clearest. Yeah. I'll say only map, just the map open. Yeah, just so yeah. you can see anything dark purple. It is, it is anything, you want, something you want to avoid because yeah. you'll go head first into it. Otherwise, yeah. yeah. And then, and then it's up to them, isn't it? Because you, you, as you, Justin says, you, you give them the choice. Yeah, yeah. I saw. I was going to you know. Carry Wharf the other night from wherever it was, Victoria, and I just said, mate, if we look, the the Victorian Bankman's solid eastbound. I said I'm going to go over Westminster Bridge and back over whichever one it was and they went yeah whatever yeah cool. 
That, that's reminding me now of what would have happened in the early days 30 years ago for me. You had to show them the problem. They wouldn't believe you that the problem was there. Mm. So if you knew, you just come through Knightsbridge and you know it's solid, you can't get through it. And you want to, rather than go through Knightsbridge, you want to go above the park and come down at something. And you say to them that, you know they're going to think you're conning me. Yeah. So you'd have to say to them, nothing. Here's the traffic. Do you want me to avoid it now? Mm. And now we'll avoid it and do some manoeuvres. Well, you can't prove I do this, but just to say, <laughs> I, I, I'll take the phone off and I'll just go look at the red lines. So say, you've got Google. If you just have a check. I'll just say, look, check it out. Yeah. We can't get it. Hey, yeah. I'm a bit out of date on modern cab driving. This is what it is. I'll give you a it? quick example just to hold it up and you can, I'm going to screenshot this so you can put it up. Just mm -hmm. That's what I'll just, just quickly put on. Knightsbridge is heavy. No, there you can see Regent Street's there. Well, obviously we all, we all know the lines. That yeah. There's Knightsbridge. Oh, Regent Knight Street's right corner. So you can, and I'm not saying you're going to go down Regent Street anyway, but just as an example, you, you would go, of course, yeah. And often, if you're still working this like late of the night, you, you, there's tons of roads to avoid stuff. The yeah. later it gets, because most roads are quiet, there's something going on somewhere. That's what you want to avoid, don't you? You want to avoid deep purple red spots. Yeah. yeah. Even at go, the top for the, of, go for the green. Even at the top of West Carriage Drive, in the, so in, in the, the Serpentine, at the top, there only has to be a tiny bit of red. You think, oh, that'll only be five or six cars. It can be 10 cars, but four light changes. Mm. So it's, unless it's um, absolutely clear, I don't go through yeah. the park. So the whole job has changed now with technology that what we would actually do and how we think about things. Yes. Was you, did you start off in the days with a map on your lap? Um, I, well, I, I didn't, didn't need to because I had the knowledge. But no, but if you said if, like... If they said a road I didn't know, yep. I had a little torch clipped onto the, onto the, the seatbelt and I was like... I knew you'd have a gadget. <laughs> I did. We always drove an A to Z back in the eighties. Yeah, yeah, too. On a truck, I always drive trucks in town, yeah. and you'd have A to Z open yeah. like that, yeah. and you'd be counting the roads, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Full on the, the left. Fourth on the right. <laughs> and on the right. And yeah. that's what I think we benefited from like, when we did the knowledge, because yeah. you've looked at an A to Z yeah. all your life. Yeah. Someone like my James is doing it now. He's never. He doesn't know what A to Z is. Still have, I still have my old one there because if that if your GPS goes. You, I've had it go a couple of nights where I couldn't log on, and oh, I was. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you don't think of that as well, yeah. It's, it's, so that's why I, I had a set. I had an iPhone eight before this, and I haven't sold it, and it's run out. The other, but what I did is I bought a, I bought a SIM on another network, so and you know with a cheap monthly tariff, so that if my Vodafone goes down, I've got Orange to back up yeah. on. As a you know, so far it's not had any trouble, but um, that's what I did. Hmm. But you've got to use it because even even though they say one of these roads in I know Victoria Hackney. It can be like one way like this, one way like that, and then, you know, one way somewhere else in the middle. Ebury Street, it's mul multiple yeah, directions. Yeah, yeah. So you have to get the number off them and put it in so you know to go down Elizabeth Street to get in there or yeah. whatever, you know. So uh, you, you absolutely need technology. I'll tell you another example. If you was, uh, say, like the drivers who live outside or out towards the M25 or beyond, and you're, you're finished now and you're going home and it's midnight, one o'clock in the morning, roads are empty, right? No. They start nighttime roadworks. You still got better off yeah. putting in home <laughs> yeah. just to check. And if it sends you a route you're not normally going, go, why is that? Then have a look. Yeah. Because you'll get stuck one night at one in the morning. Every other road's empty and you've gone past the last. Yeah. And yeah. So yeah, yeah. even then, check. Yeah, the, the A2 isn't yeah. as bad. The A13 is, I don't do them. I can't. So the A2, I'm on the A2, but the A13s, so I just see drivers moaning about it, being yeah. trapped there every night because of some accident or. Yeah. You know, it's hell. I actually have a, had a cousin who packs up driving a black cab. He lived out near uh, Basildon, and uh, he said, I just couldn't stand it coming in anymore. Well, he's coming in always from Basildon. Yeah, every, he used to come in. Track. And he said, I, I, there was always something on the A13. Mm, he said, yeah. always something. He said, either couldn't get in or couldn't get home or something. He said, in the end, drove me mad. He said, so I, I had enough. Yeah, I can see that. Mm. I got mm. caught with Rob Rive Tunnel many times. I'd always be on the south side of the river coming home, and you get to the tunnel late at night. It's usually a Monday night at midnight, I think it is. It mm. would shut. I think mm. we went south of the river. <laughs> This is what's always funny when people say that to me. If I didn't go south of the river, I wouldn't be able to get home, would I? I'll be the same, I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. no, you've got to use you gotta use tech. You know, people said this the end of us with Google Maps. Well, they didn't realise it also makes us better mm -hmm. because it's got our knowledge combined with uh maps tracking, you know, like you might know the shortest route, but actually it's it can figure out which is the and sometimes I've tried to beat it. It is bang on for the amount of time it gets. Yeah. It can be one minute quicker to go this way. And a couple of times I've gone rubbish, I can beat that and I've been three minutes slower. Yeah. And it's it's pretty accurate with uh, timing. It's yeah, I have to use it. And you see cabbies caught in place like, mate, that's been on that's easily spotted <laughs> on ways or you should not be sitting in that jam. 
but they they, they refuse. You get them on Twitter. I'm not touching sat nav. I didn't do the knowledge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like I don't, and they complain. I didn't need a postcode. Oh, so you know every road in Cambridge, or you know every road in yeah. you, know, you know that I don't know every road Wales. where I live. Yeah, exactly. It's like I don't know. There's so many roads. If somebody hails me in Bexley, I'd be sweating. <laughs> now I'm the worst in I'm the worst in my land. I, 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 and here, Salmon's Lane. This, I'm born and bred here. And they tested me the other day. They said, you know, I think Car Street or whatever. They started asking you streets here. I don't know. I've been up and down. I've even got friends that live in them. But I don't know the names of the streets here. <laughs> so unless it's asked on the knowledge, unless it has a root on it, I don't know it. No, you could be, it could be the next one to where you live. Next one to where you live, yeah, yeah definitely. You wouldn't know it. No. Yes, I, when I was, when I was, <laughs> I was a minicab driver um, in 97, 97 to 2002, to, Four. And I lived in Kenya Road in Charlton. And I picked up a customer one day. He said, Kenya Road. I went, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> and when he said lefty, I went, oh. <laughs> I'd lived there for 10 years. Uh, well, you know, that's the job. Did I, I lived in a, a turning years ago, many 30 years ago or more, called Gables Close, off of Brand Dean Crescent. It was a bearing road near Grove Park, near the South Circular. And when we first bought this brand new wimpy home the first night there we were woken up to a, what we thought was an earthquake and everything was shaking the, the pictures were shaking everything was shaking in the place and we sat up and we we're only young and, and the, we'd be next to Hivergreen uh, railway depot so all the goods trains were coming in and shook the apartment like unbelievable did you buy that house Oh, I'd already bought it. I didn't know overnight. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. eventually, after some weeks, we got used to it and we slept through it and we lived there for a couple of years. Well, years and years later, 30 years later, I got a job and he wanted to go SE12. And yeah. that was where, where he was. And when she said, but you, well, you won't know it, but it's off of uh, Bering Road. I said, which one? I said, oh. Bram Dean, it's off Bram Dean Cross. Well, cable, cable's close. <laughs> I said, do the flats still shake of the night? She went, do they? <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. not only did I know where that one was, I even knew that a flat shook during the night. That's one of those things where they, they say before you buy a place, go and, you know, like scope it out for a week yeah. beforehand. See who lives nearby, what cars pull up, what kind of people go by, noises, da da da. Sit yeah. outside in the car and watch it because they're not going to tell you something. Why are you selling it? Yeah, and how did you sell it? It went straight away. I mean, obviously we didn't say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but you all you have to do is say, well, surely you knew it was by a train station. I mean, for... Well, yeah, but I think, how old was I then? 20? 21? Okay. I was oh, you must have been rich. You bought a house when you was... <laughs> what? Yes. Jeez. I think it was the second place. I'd buy it. But yeah. you could do that back then. You, you could, could get you mortgages. You could yeah, just yeah. make a call and you had a mortgage. Yeah, didn't you? I lived in a camper van till I was 26. No, well, no this is 90. Well, no, I think the first place I bought was 1986. So when would that have been? That may have been... That 80, house, 88, I think. A house would have only been double your, more, your, your salary now? Back yeah, then, but then. you could just pick up the phone. It was like, I yeah. mean, nowadays they want to know everything. But you just said what you wanted to say and they gave you it. Yeah. They were, it they were like now. I think I remember the prices around then would have been a flat in East Ham where it would have been 60,000. Yeah. And your wages would have been 20,000. So it kind of would have been three times wages back then mm. to get, a, which is now is nowhere near it, is it? 15 times wages probably. Yeah. Yeah, the mortgage would go for I mean, 20 years, 25 years, 30 years and beyond now, aren't they? And they're going to end up... Do you know the, the new mortgages? Yeah. Was it me and you when someone was telling us? No, no I don't know. Because it's gone from 20, 25, 30 and beyond. And the new mortgage will be that your children will take it over when you die. Oh, right. Mm. So Inherit that, the mortgage. Yeah, because you won't be able to pay it in your lifetime. Well, that's the only way that society, I think, can go on now is your... Children have got to start looking after their parents because the system, the NHS, can't cope, and uh, the, you know you're not going to get cover for these people. No, we do. Well, I still got my father. We we won't. I won't. He won't go nowhere. But he's ninety one. He's dead. But he stay with us. All right. You want to look after him? Yeah. Because uh, there was a thing I saw about um, going in old people's homes, and there's a couple that worked out that a cruise for a month was a thousand five hundred or something, wasn't it? And the, in the old people's home was two grand. So they went on a cruise for two years or whatever. I think it was. they've just bought. They've just they're staying in. That's all they die. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> staying, staying why don't we buy ships then? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if it's cheaper to do that, it does get a bit strange. I mean, I'd imagine as well in Turkey that you got the full board hotels. That I guarantee you could get a year's stay in a full board hotel cheaper than you could get to stay in a old people's home. Is Not the, sure. Is the is the um, conversion still like five times what it was? The now, currency exchange thirty six to one now. Okay, what was it a year ago? 
Oh, a year ago, not too different. But going back four years, it was like 10 to 1. Going back 20 years, it was 2 to 1. Good bird watching in Turkey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mr. Price used to come and do his bird watching in he Turkey. He was, wasn't he? Yeah. Oh, Price, he was into that. Twi- why is it called Twitter or Twitter, whatever you Twitching, call it? Twitching. 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 Why is it called that? <laughs> Twitching. Why, why are you Twitching? I'll have to go online. I imagine. I, I think it's got something to do with the, the towel. Twitch. A bird twitches? Is it, you think? Yeah, the towel twitches, didn't it, on the bird? Some of the, uh, like a, what's the black and white one called? The house martin kind of warbler. House martin warbler. <laughs> There's a, That's a new species. <laughs> yeah, the house martin warbler. <laughs> <laughs> it's got some sort of nervous twitch. The house martin cockatoo <laughs> yeah. sparrowhawk. No, I don't know. I, I think it might be. You know a house martin is black and white, little thing? Yeah. And then there's another black and white one. There's a little one. I think it's a warbler is the other black and white one. I don't know. I'm not very good at birds. If it ain't a sparrow mm. and a pigeon. Two legs. Yeah, so the house martin is like a is like a swallow. Those ones that fly yes. around constantly in the air, like black, the black dots going round. Right. And the warblers are usually in a in a bush, walking, jumping around on on. And I think there's one called a wagtail, which yeah. is a little uh, black and white. Well, usually on the floor, yeah. With a long, it's got a yeah. longish. So I'm I'm presuming that's the twitch. Yeah, that's the wagtail, and then you've you know the other birds, yeah, wagtail, and um, yeah, some some of them have the um, what are they like red shank? They sort of do this. And the, kingfishers, <laughs> the kingfishers do this. Yeah, <laughs> I like a kingfisher. With the Star Wars. Uh, Stone Trooper Birds. thing. Yeah. Have you have you ever done the the, the children's magical taxi tour? Because I don't know. Is Star Wars. I made, did it. I did it, it once to Brighton, the Brighton one. Uh, that's a different one to this one. It goes to Paris. Okay, well, yeah. but it's the because of the Disney theme. I don't know. Does who makes Star Wars? Yeah, Disney. Yeah. Wouldn't they love to see him turn up? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, he might not be allowed. If, if, if I allowed. drove that, I'd be in trouble in the costume. Do you Is fit it? in it? Huh? Yeah, yeah, but I drove, I did a video, my first, the reason I call myself Storm Cap is I did a video of me driving in the, but I wasn't in, the, I was only chest plated and shouldered and helmet, We're in the, like three in the morning, and yeah. I quickly whip it off, it was in the middle of Putney, where there was no one around, and I could do that, yeah. and not, you know, because the visibility see. was terrible, um, but you can't, you physically could not, you can almost not sit down in it as it is, let alone get into a vehicle, so I had nothing on from sort of the waist down, except trousers. But you're a little so, short for a stormtrooper. I'm sitting six foot one. Man. <laughs> did you not get the? This, this, uh, is it? Did you not get the line? Uh, Princess <laughs> Princess Leia says it to Luke Skywalker. She can tell he's not a. He's a little short for a stormtrooper, isn't he? Luke Skywalker. She says to him. I no, but I did. I did the. No, I did one. The problem is with the tours. They're always. I work nights, mm. and they're always what setting off at five o'clock. Yeah. So my body clock is on the other side of the the planet. I tell you one day, you are, you are 40 years old. You can 45, <laughs> 6. You can get That's my right. excuse anyway. Oh, sorry, I, I put 20 years between us earlier. I know it's only 10, so, yeah. you know. What about yourself? He's 50, we're the same, 56, 57. Oh, 28. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 58. 58, 58. 58. Yeah. Where are you? You're 57, you're younger yeah, than me. 57, yeah, I'm younger than you, cause I, and I look it. You remember what 57-year-olds used to, sorry, 57-year-olds used to look like? Old oh, man, it's like oh, yeah, yeah. things have changed, haven't they? That is a really funny thing that we mm. do. All my dad's friends, when they were in their 50s, they were already on for death. I'm sure of it. And they yeah. were, all probably died in their 50s and 60s. Smoking and drinking. You know. Yeah. But yeah. I think it was just the way they dressed back then. It's like the, one of the first things, is, you know, back then. Was, yeah, it would have been a, a giveaway was up there, the belt. Yeah. Um, but just the style. You could see a 30-year-old back then, and they looked like a like a father who had a 20-year-old kid. Yeah, yeah. You know, just their, their hairstyle and their moustache and... Yeah, just I think they just worked harder, though, didn't they? Their physical work as well? Worked harder. Generations well, we, before us worked harder. I mean, you can't yeah. say that the influences on are working hard, are they? I think smoking mm. and drinking has a massive, more massive effect than people can imagine. Yeah. I mean, well, look, you, you know, you, you look worse for the wear. I know. I, I'm, I'm just thinking, I wish I lived in those days. All that smoking and drinking sounds wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, this is, this is the theory. I ha- Well, it's not probably other people. But why, you know, you see these pictures now of people, these huge fat people on a beach, and then they show the 60s and they say, what happened? And my theory is because smoking is an appetite suppressant. Mm. That's what it was. You just smoked and it's like it stopped you being. Oh, I, I think it's because food wasn't in abundance. <laughs> But then I, I wasn't around Fast in the sixties, but I'm yeah. I'm sure you could. A lot of the food was still like you know battered fish and chips. It would have been, but and bat, and fish and chips would have been a major treat. Yes, it would have been a big treat. We okay. never we never got often got fish and chips. Yeah, okay. We got crackling. We got crackling yeah, crackling, crackling. Yeah, yeah, got yeah. Crackling, but we never got. I wouldn't. See, uh, rare. Now, I got a bit of cod. I can tell you. Right now, yeah. that stuff would be called junk food, like bad for your heart. But it's from an animal. There's nothing wrong with it. It's it's crackling. Yeah. No, it's oh no, no, you're talking about pig crackling. We're talking about fish crackling. 
Oh, right, in the yeah. so basically fish batter, waste. They called it waste, waste yeah, yeah, yeah. So what was I watching the other day when he said he used to... It was... Um, oh, what's the celebrity chef, Martin? He said he used to do that when George he was fishing. Yeah, he'd go and get fish and chips for the family and he'd say, give me all the scraps. Yeah, yeah. and people call it a different thing. We used to call it crackling. Mm. Yeah, and uh, they'd give it for free. In all the chip shops, all the kids would turn up and get it for free, and then they started charging. Started we were talking charging, about five yeah. p uh, and so on. Outrageous! It was outrageous because that was my only sort of like food nourishment. You used to go fishing, didn't you? A bag of chips, a bit of crackling. Yeah, <laughs> Portion of crackling. Oh, you, couldn't, we could, you couldn't afford the fish, could you? How could you afford the fish? So yeah, then? even uh, that's the thing. It's even our generation, we were brought up, luckily, um, not on diets that were super fatty. It was just superficial. We, we, if you could eat. Um, like you said about the broken biscuits. Yeah, pizza. So a broken biscuit would have been a treat, a bag of broken biscuits, whereas now people are eating them American cookies, but they're eating in abundance every day. For us, it would be like, well, yeah. you know, yeah. we don't have biscuits. It was cooked dinners, though, as well, weren't they? We weren't out of the box. No. You never got a choice like now. They school dinners, have, I think it's school dinners were very good. Yeah. yeah but even whatever, whatever was cooked, it was your tea, wasn't it? Yeah. Your tea's ready. There was and, no and, menu. And yeah. come, come, say, for instance, disco for Sunday... After five o'clock, you wanted a treat. There's nothing open at all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now there's corner shops and everything. Yes, yeah. yeah Sundays. Was, yeah, I, I think not from the religious point of view, but it was just it's nice cultural point of view of having Sundays closed. You but, still have it closed? Yeah, bring it back. Shut everything down on Sundays. Pubs two to twelve till two. Oh, yeah. Well, pubs are still working to sort of um, sociable hours, aren't they? Even though they can open twenty four hours, can't they? Yeah, but they used to be 12 till 2, wasn't it? Only open for two hours years ago, wasn't it? On, yeah, Sunday. Get, on a Sunday. Do you get, do you get yeah, customers Sunday. moaning about that? They say, where can we go for a drink? I'd say, half 12. And I'm like, it's where we've now got 20, we've given the 24-hour license. And I have to say, there's nowhere. Yeah. Nowhere's open. So no one took it, yeah. yeah. Strange that. And then, yeah, who's, you, well, who's going to be there at 3 in the morning? Somebody wants to buy alcohol. You take them to a thing that says 24-hour alcohol. You go, they say, no, we don't serve it after 11. Yeah, I, don't, yeah. I don't get it. Do they have to pay like extra tax if they s- sell it after a so certain off time? license? They yeah. don't still t- mm. like you oh, have they've to still know. got to tell the police. They've still got to be in there. They've still they can't just sell it whenever you want, can you? Well, alcohol. Yeah, the pubs pubs can. No, but I mean, a pub, a pub can't just open twenty four hours. He still has to tell the license officer, so surely. Oh, I think he does have to say I'm going to be open twenty four hours, and they might be able to say you can't because you're in an area where yeah. you've yeah. got trouble. I maybe, don't know. Maybe it's just the staffing, like trying to get people two to or three or four people. Opening a pub, paying their shifts, their wages and electricity prices, stay open. Three people might only come to drink, so yeah. they're just done the numbers and like, it's not worth it. Yeah. No, but it's not a drinking culture anymore, is it? Unless you're in a, no. a nightclub or something. They're always, pubs are always open. Do you remember, did you ever go to the pubs, like the print workers pubs and the market pubs? Years are you, ago? Are you, Spitfield, Smithfield. Yeah, there was one on the Wapping. What was that one? The Caxton. But they, on were, the highway. they were 24 hours because of the market they, workers. They used to open at four in the morning. They yeah. were for the print, weren't it? Yeah, proper drinkers. Okay. I used to work nights. If we finish at six in the morning, we used to have a pint. <laughs> <laughs> we did in the Caxton down the highway. Those were the days. Yeah. You see, that was what was. That's how our conversation started off, at, and now we've gone full circle. And it is this reminiscing of what the days were. There was something good about it, um, and the reason I actually love Turkey is they still have some of the things that we've lost. So, for example. There is, in my street, probably two or three tailors. You want your trousers taken up. You run to the shop around the corner. It's 50 pence. He takes the trousers up. There's about 10 bakers. There's no going to the supermarket to get your bread. And I go to my favourite baker every day. He knows me and he's brilliant. Um, there's about four picture framers. I need something framed. I go to the picture right there. Everything is there in the high street. And the, none of them are making big dough. Whereas here, it's about... Do you own a chain of shops across the country and you, you are the, the picture framing place? If you had to get a picture framed, where would, do you know a picture framer that you could think of at top of your head? Yeah. Oh, you do? Well, just, just, just Google it. Wasn't it. Yeah, you would Google it and you'd have to go somewhere or you'd send it off to the but internet. It's, it's also, it's very pricey. If you think a picture frame, I'd, I guarantee it'd be like 40, 50 quid. Whereas oh, in Turkey, more than that. You're, yeah. you're, I assume you're taking your salary to Turkey where it's times 30 times the... Oh, you know, but without to locals, any doubt. that fifty p that it costs to do the trousers might be someone's a salary oh. for someone for a day. It, it for seemed, you, it's yeah. like just you know money found on the back of the couch. If you imagine then, if from the cultural point of view of imagine it in England, and you say that a bottle of water at the moment costs us twenty pence for a bottle of water, and then four years from now, it's actually going to cost you five pounds. That's the inflation that they've dealt with. So we're now saying. What, what was five quid? I ain't paying that. It was twenty pence four years ago. It's 
the price increase is just astronomical. I bought a table when I went there first time. I bought a table that was two to the pound, two lira, one pound. Now it's 36 lira is one pound. And that's the inflation over 20 years. So I go there with my money and I'm happy because we're on European money. I wonder if that's, that's obviously going to have brought them a lot of business. You know, people are coming in and spending money that locals can't spend. Well, they taxed it. So I was about to buy a car and I can't afford a car in Turkey. Oh. The new BMW X3, whatever it is, nothing big deal, probably about 40 grand here is 100 grand there. Right. So they put 100 and something percent tax on it and they're going to put it up again. Yeah, I noticed that when I travel, when I go to like Costa, when I went to Costa Rica recently, a guy was saying, one of the hotel workers was saying, oh, that's a nice camera. What did you pay for it? And when you try and buy those things there, they're like four times the price. Yeah. I'm almost like, part of me is like, you know, there's a little thing going on here. I could take trips over here, bring a couple of cameras, sell them to the hotel staff, pay for the, the trip and go back. Yeah, home. that's what people do. I yeah. mean, you can't but do it for cars, but you, you can yeah. do it for that. You probably have to find the fine line of, you know, yes. you're making some money that's not being taxed. You have to, you know, I'm not going to jail for something stupid and yeah. making a 500 quid or something. People think it's bad, but the idea is obvious. Um, the regular guy in the street who's struggling to buy a loaf of bread and milk is not buying camera lenses. Mm. The person who's buying camera lenses is the rich locals, and if they can b- want to buy a camera lens, then we'll make it really expensive, and if they want to buy it, they can still buy it. The problem they then have, though, is that that person is rich enough to actually fly out the country and have an holiday and buy stuff abroad anyway, so you don't, you don't win generally. But with cars, they've got you. Mm. So if you want a car... The, the problem is as well, though, there's another catch. My wife's BMW is 10 years old, is worth £30,000. It's a 10-year-old BMW. So if you make a new car 100 grand, then the second-hand ones are all in that respect as well. And you can't bring one in from Europe. So, so what do they do? do they, does Turkey make cars? They do. And I was thinking they make a new one called a TOG. It's a new Turkish electric car. And it looks lovely. And I thought to myself, we should ask about that, Sarah, because it's being Turkish, it might not be in the tax band. It will be just a straightforward car price. She won't buy because it's Turkish. (laughs) 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 I've never heard of it. No, you won't have done. You won't have done. It's a lovely looking car, but they've they've gone for it. You watch, it'll be like Skoda or Lada. (laughs) Not Lada, but Skoda was, it was a joke one day. And it's like, remember we were laughing at um, Tog? Yeah, it's Tog. It's called a Tog. Yeah, we're all laughing at Tog and now they've got SUVs and the Skoda. It looks beautiful. It really looks beautiful. And I think the technology of cars has changed because it's a battery and a steering wheel now. If you make the outside shell not made of a Vauxhall from the 1970s, so it's not going to rust, it's, they're all lovely, aren't they? The technology now for cars is kind of evened out. I don't think any car rusts now, does it? No, you don't. A, a, a ten- you. Oh, they do, because I've seen TXE's drivers saying, I've had this for nine months, I can already see a rust spot. Really? Mm. Genuinely, they can see a rust that, spot? That's what I saw. I saw somebody say it. I say, here we go. <laughs> Really, I, I haven't seen a rust spot on a cab since the fairway come off the road. No, mine, mine. I've got. Um, I just sold my my storm. My last one, twelve years, came up to twelve years. I was needing probably a grand's worth of of um, body work. Body work done for rust that was bubbling, and even this one's got a little bit. When I bought it, it was second hand with like a month to the inspection. And with what was on there, I said, "Am I going to get through that inspection with those bits?" And he said, "Yeah, they'll just get through." And I luckily, I. I chanced it and i didn't get any work done to it and they they mm. just let it they i didn't let i failed on a few other things um and um but they never said anything about the, about the rust it wasn't obvious it was like but you can see it start the bubble inside the door frames yeah. and on a couple of the edges at the back of the, the bonnet you got rust on yours no where can people find you what's the links just Twitter. storm cab everywhere just google yeah. it whatever twitter on Stoom, and you're not making any more videos I like the oh, one where you were eating your lunch the on your steering wheel. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> Tom. Tom did. Uh, I did a video of the uh, the the cooker, the in-car cooker, which got me so much. Fl- <laughs> 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 and then he did it and got like tens thousands of like, tens of thousands of. Yeah, I, actually, no. That one when I made it, it had about hundred thousand views. That wasn't too bad. Wow, you got an hundred thousand views. That was video. back then. That was back then. That was like ten years ago. It was wow. like hundred thousand. But yeah, I've been on my. I've got a lot of stuff, like a few bits taken from films, but. Sub, a lot of my videos are in the 100, 200,000 back then. Yeah. So if I'd have kept it up, but it's like, I, it must be an age thing. I'm like, I can't be hard. It's like, you've, yeah, you I know if you get into it, it, you've got to then produce something on a regular basis mm-hmm. to keep everybody happy. You see a lot of these 
podcast to take off. They go from once every two weeks, then it's every day. Yeah, no, and they, these people, I see them, they've got no life. They don't do yeah. anything. Yeah. I had a website, Stormcab, and it was like I created it for putting information for me first. Like it was like abbreviations for mm. Twitter, like Bone and, um, you know, H, uh, um, Hyde Park Corner, HPC, what's that? Hyde Park Corner, because all the butters would come onto the work channels. And what's this abbreviation? Mm. What's Bone? It's Marilla Bone. Meet, what's Meet on the Bone? It means there's work at Marilla Bone Station. And I put it on there for me, first of all. I thought, put it on there so everybody, and then it was, I put garages numbers on there, you know, insurance, da, da, da. Mm. And somebody, another cab driver said, Look, we should start charging for this. And did, we got together. And I just said to him, you know what? Cab drivers won't want to pay for anything. No. And I just, we just forget it. And I, I gave up the website a few years ago. I stopped doing it uh, because, yeah. and then a couple of years later, somebody said, have you still got that website? See, that's why I don't do it. Because <laughs> nobody's even noticed it's gone. <laughs> and it's like, it, it's, it's not going to, I don't think it's, I, you, know, you know, you've got this podcast going, but it's like, it's not going to get the number, for me to get involved in something like if you always, you know, people say, why don't you start one? I said, it would be so much work and you'd have to, you'd have to be, you have to quite, you couldn't do it about cabin. It'd be too narrow, Yeah, you know, but it's like the fitness podcasts I listen to them, but the ones I, my favorite ones now, they started off as fitness, but now I, especially like this one called mind pump, which is like, I had a, one of the best experiences of my life a month ago, the day before I went to Costa Rica, biggest fitness and table podcast in the world based in San Francisco. And, they, they, I mean, they still do fitness stuff, but the, my favorite bit of theirs is just them chatting shit, you know, talking yeah. about what they've seen in the news, what they're doing with their family. And then when they turn to the fitness stuff and it's like, uh, it's like, yeah, okay, I kind of yeah. know that, you know, squats and deadlifts, but I just like them talking. And anyway, the point was, was that one day I saw them, uh, when they were coming over to London, this was a month ago, and I messaged them saying, do you need a cab? Yes, they did. And they said, come to dinner with us. So they took ah. me to dinner. And it was like, I was... I was, I'm still floating from it now. I can't believe it. it took me to the Hawksmoor, and um, yeah, I got pictures of me which one? The, uh, the one in Canary Wharf. because ah. one of the guys there, there's Mind Pump and there's Max Lugavere. He's like a New York Times best-selling author, and and when they said we're going to pick him up first, I went, oh man, two of the biggest bodies, <laughs> and he was at Canary Wharf, and they wanted to go into Central London, and I was like, uh, why do you want to? It's like busy there. Why, will you go down there just because just you think you have to? And he went, no, no, we just want some food. I said, mate, Canary Wharf's got loads of stuff. And he said, I said, what do you want? He said, steak, we're fitness guys. I went, Hawksmoor. And I went, say, see you later, I'll pick you up later. And they went, come to dinner with us. I went, <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> I'll have some of that. Oh, uh, mate, yeah, it's a buzzing. Justin Snedden, thank you for coming along. Been really a pleasure. Um, we have literally talked for two hours, which is a nightmare, as you say. People don't understand the hard work that goes yeah, into it. Uh, yeah, and people used to say that long format doesn't work and Rogan's the biggest podcast in the world because a lot of people are doing things for hours on end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they just want to put a podcast in. And just have it going. Just go. Well, we had it, Dave. Did you see the critic's comment you got? Well. On the, one of the messages, it said, uh, I love you and uh, Dave's podcast. I just wish it goes on longer. Oh, that one, that <laughs> message, yeah. <laughs> yes.